Hi, good morning, everybody. This is the Human Colony Saturday webinar. My name is Bree, and today is November 12th, 2016. Um, today we are featuring Wendy from Languages of Lights, who has come to be our um, guide, teacher, channeler, and help explain certain topics that don't get talked about a lot. So good morning, Wendy. How are you doing this morning? And Wendy, are you on mute? Thanks, guys. Sorry about that. I'm having internet, so I'm just going to say hi so I can freeze. <laughs> Hello. Um, I will explain quickly. She'll probably have to turn off her video because um, she's having internet connectivity things. We want to make sure we can hear her, so she, she might pop on and off. Um, and also, we have Max who has joined us today, and Max is also going to channel a bit for us. Good morning, Max. Hey. Hey. Um, awesome. So this is going to be really exciting. Um, people, you are able to watch and um, ask questions in the YouTube live chat. Box. I will be answering questions there if you ask any, um, as well as in the Google Hangout box for this chat if you're on mobile. Post your questions there, and we will get to them. Um, we have a few announcements to make before we get started this morning. Um, so, Max, did you want to talk about the Reiki first? Yeah, um, we would like to people to write to reiki at humancolony.org just to express your interest in a specific type of class, uh, reiki 1, reiki 2, reiki 3, or uh, channeling classes. So reiki at humancolony.org. Perfect, yes. Um, so, we need um, people who are interested in learning reiki and um, particularly galactic reiki, correct? That is one of the main things that is taught. We teach uh, classical Reiki plus galactic, and galactic is everything else which doesn't fit in the classical one, right? Classical is called Usui, and galactic is whatever we get from our alien, angelic, and um, higher dimensional friends, and there is basically tons more. So symbols, yeah. chants, um, energy movements, meditations, understanding of karma, and it goes way beyond. So. So that all is taught on level one, two, three, and then there is also channeling, yes. Jim and Wonderful. Max, we usually would do it on Saturdays or Sundays, depending how people want it. So write to us what you want, and we will, when we have enough interest, we will schedule next class. Okay, excellent. Yeah, let's get some interest in that going, because um, we are blessed to be able to even talk about Galactic Reiki, or the fact that it exists, or we can learn it. So... Um, let's all let's all commence the healing. Um, all right, moving forward then. Um, also wanted to just mention keep up to date on Human Colony events by going to humancolony.org. Uh, we have a calendar on there for upcoming events, and then also if you want to access these links for participation and watch, you can go to humancolony.org/jump. It is our links page galore. Um, so with that said, um, I can int introduce a little bit about Wendy. Some, a lot of people in the community might already know Wendy, but um, I guess maybe just as far as the basics, um, Wendy just celebrated, I, I said congratulations, happy anniversary to her yesterday on the 11th because sh she had um, woken up with her spiritual awakening on 11, 11, 11. So that was five years ago. Um, and I just thought it was funny yesterday. It was her, her spiritual awakening anniversary. I know it's hard to put a, a date on that, but really we all have that point where I think it just kind of hits us and we're like, whoa, okay, it's time to figure out more about what this is all about. Um, so Wendy's been at this for a while, but um, recently the light languages, the galactic light languages and the channeling and everything has really started to come very strongly to her. And um, we're all awakening to those parts of ourselves that we've been suppressing and it's super exciting to bring our gifts to the world. So Wendy, um, is there anything you would like to start out 
saying in regards to uh, your journey and um, particularly um, the, the new gifts and blessings that you have recently discovered? Well, thank you, Bray. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Yes, as many of you already know, I, I um, have been, I've, I've been blessed with the joy of discovering how much I love light languages and, and where, what surprises me the most is how it's all led. And so, yeah, um, all of these things are floating around. It's like there's so much information that's been flooding in, as we all know how it gets. It's like um, trying to push Niagara Falls through a straw. It's, there's so much, and everything so integrated and is so exciting for me because of this whole 11-11 and then having that be yesterday. And now we're ha – and it's funny because even after – um, when we were talking about doing the webinar today, it didn't even occur to me about 1111. And actually, you reminded me <laughs> by thanking, you know, by congratulating me on my little anniversary um, about that. It has, you know, wow, okay, it's been five years since I, like you said, really just woke up. Now, I, people who've, Felt like all my life I sort of was awake. One else was asleep, and I was always seeing this correlation between numbers, and um, and I didn't really understand it. Really enjoyed. I enjoyed astrology. I enjoyed anything to do with terrestrials and angels. I collected angels all my life. I always believed that I could speak to them. I actually believed when I was a kid I could become invisible. Forest fairy. I mean, so the other side of that, which is very interesting with this whole new um, change in energy this week, is that we're finally becoming to understand that that is the real us, that those realms are the real thing. And what we and, and so the point is, is I never allowed myself to play though when I was a kid, an up kid. So now I'm finally understanding. Okay, this is my time to play, and now I'm I'm allowing we as a collective allowing now these fun things out in ourselves. We're allowing ourselves to see all this. The, the different beautiful prism sides of ourselves, whether it's, you know, it doesn't matter. Pleiadian, Pleiadian, uh, dragons, um, you know, elves, fairies, uh, pixies, I mean, you name it, angels, we are all of that. So the beauty of yes. this is, is, yeah, discovering all that now. And I'm like, wow, and where I've come in five years, where I've only just in a couple of years, um, has been very exciting for me. And when I first found, um, you know, I, I don't want to go too much into the whole history thing, but it was, you know, I came into this pro very similar to a lot of people, but I was a big Doctor Who fan. I, I loved Star Wars and Star Trek. And even when I was a kid, we talk about, we point, um, many of you may not remember some of these old cartoons, but a lot of these shows that I had growing up in my existence were part of my whole, I feel like it was now I understand, like uh, everything from Robin Williams and Mark from Orc, um, all the alien shows um, that have come that, that where they made them as puppets or they made them fun they were really trying we were really trying to embrace this through the media yeah that's um that's interesting you no, mentioned because, that and and that's not even, oh sorry um okay, that's a whole other subject though isn't it yeah well it is right and it goes into i mean there's there's so many things we can discuss in terms of uh, what we do in the astral, you know, and what happens there and these different facets of ourselves, these different crystalline fragment consciousness pieces of ourselves scattered across the whole omniverse and the fact that we can connect with all of it and 
uh, and the fact that now we're able to, and um, we can bring in those parts of ourselves that we feel best suit our mission here on earth while we're in these bodies. So um, there's just, there's so much. And I just wanted to quickly go back to when you said about play and how now, I mean, back when you were a kid, you, this was also like exciting stuff and it felt normal to you. And then, you know, the programming and the brainwashing and the, oh, society, you know, you have to do this and that. And, and then you just kind of like lose, lose sight of it all. But now we can return to it. And I just wanted to touch again on, um, the play aspect of it. I'm sorry, what did you say, Max? Sorry, I was thinking my microphone is off. Sorry, keep going. Oh, oh that's okay. <laughs> um, uh, Wendy, just so you know, though, Max um, did request if you could try to talk maybe a slightly bit slower because your connection is speeding up some of your words and you already talk yeah. fast. So let's I will. let's <laughs> a little bit slow it down i know we're working with the connection here so people please send your good your good energy please send good vibes so we can continue this here um so again so there's so many things we can talk about but play i just really wanted to touch on that the fact that we okay so we create our own reality right this is an understanding we are coming to learn prior to uh, me and most other people being taught that everything happens to you and there's all this external stuff and you just have to deal with it and, and you have to live with it and good luck type of thing. Um, but that's not the case at all. We're creating everything that we see. We live in a holographic universe. So with that said, um, we can now take these things that we love to do, that we get excited about, talking about whether it be like light languages for me and Wendy. We're just like crazy about these light languages. They're so exciting for us. And we're going to talk more about that and why um, light languages are so fascinating and so helpful on so many multidimensional ways it, for healing and so much more. Um, but so we can take something that we're excited about, dragons, fairies, whatever, channeling, whatever it may be, and now we can find a way, we can have the universe help us find a way to do that it, for in our life, for a living, and we can make these things that we thought were um, just chores before into playtime, into um, fun hobbies that we s might even get financial um, or, or whatever energy exchange from if that's the route that we choose to do it. So I really just wanted to mention that, that we're able to make this stuff fun. We can play with this now because this we are creating all of this, so we might as well have fun with this game that we're playing here instead of um, getting wrapped up in um, you know, the perceptions of negativity that we could have and a lot of times have had in the past. And it's okay to have those, but um, I personally at least am learning that there's a whole different side to all of this. So um, I'm, I'm just... I really want to make sure that we touch on um, light languages and everything. So with with that, Wendy, well, let me first then mention the different types of channeling. I'm not going to go into the different types. You guys can look that up on your own if you want, you know. But um, as far as the channeling communities that I've seen so far online, a lot of people are still um, doing trance channeling and that's what a lot of people are used to okay so we're used to um, these entities uh, coming in and coming into the different chakra points whatever it may be and it kind of being more um, the it's it's a trance so you get into this deep state and you're not so much of yourself is there um, but Wendy is a little bit more of a conscious channeler so it isn't as much as the whole the entity is like um, fully being allowed to take control of the situation, not take control, but you know what I mean. Um, so I, I really wanted to mention that there are different types of channeling and as a community as a whole, as a society as a whole, as we continue to open up more to being telepathic and open up more to the idea that we are all channelers and we do all channel, all day long doing different things that especially that we enjoy um, there's there's a big 
uh, factor of that. It, Max, is there anything that you wanted to say in regards to um, conscious and trans channeling and the differences? Sorry, you had unmuted. I thought you might wanted to say something. Um, so with that said, then I um, did want to highlight on that. So Wendy, as far as um, your type of channeling, do you want to explain kind of how how it works for you? Um, as far as you, you kind of, it's more like a telepathic communication, right? It's not so much it's kind of um, like, well, it's a little bit of, it's, it's a kind of a little bit of everything. It's, it, when the light languages started, it was like, then people started translating what the light, what we were saying in the light languages. Like, for example, Jim was, Jim was really good at it. There was people that were able to take the packets of information and, assimilated in such a way that they were able to then, and I don't like to use translate, I like to call interpret better because really it's always an interpretation. And so I don't know that we can call them direct translations. I can't even say that is a direct translation because it is so combined with all the multi-layers that are us. The next wave as you mentioned, of channeling is conscious channeling because conscious channeling is the next step to complete telepathy. And so for me, it's as if they're always there talking. It's just whether or not I turn the switch on or not. It's they're always feeding information and, and I couldn't isolate or even write out everything I hear or experience in a day. I would constantly be, so there's just too much of it. So it's it's almost as if when I'm speaking languages, now it's almost like it's coming, the message, the trans, the, the, my, the interpretation. So the ba basically, how can I express this a little bit differently too, is that when I very first started speaking them in the forest and now I, that's a whole nother thing about being in nature which was a huge switch for me because i started spending a great deal more time in nature that was huge to my awakening actually that was probably the biggest catalyst to be honest with you that was before i found human colony it was before i found channelers before i found bashar so but i'd like to remind everybody too that 11 11 is also bashar's birth and from Charles, I found in private sessions my own connections to the Shikani and Bashar and the 1111. So there's that whole thing too. But that set aside, these are just all synchronicities that I wanted to invite in people's in, in, in awareness that all these synchronicities and the numbers and there, it's all information and nothing is not connected. And so yourself to be to understand that you can connect to anything at any time it kind of changes your perspective and I've always been kind of more of a multi-dimensional sort of understanding kind of person so maybe that's why I connect the way I do now um, and what all my facets of me um, I, I feel very alien. Even Max has said to me, "You're like you're pretty alien." Um, but I, you know, what does that mean, really? But it it means that some some people connect differently than others. And um, when I first was um, when I very first started speaking languages, the first thing, the first entity, if you will, or it, it's a collective. It wasn't an entity collective that said, "You know, we are." the Elohim, and this is the name. Now, because we are so stuck on labels and names, this is the whole part of the channeling too here, is that we are so stuck on identification and labels because that's what humans do. I'm understanding that, that it can connect to collectives. Of okay, yes. So, so this is, it's yeah. really good you brought this up right here because, um, 
that is one thing that is a message that you've been getting that I've been hearing other people get. And so we're going to be moving to channeling here just in a moment. But I think this is very important to mention that um, as far as the um, the labeling that we we have to do um, to figure out the different types of energy and stuff. Too much of it, it can actually limit our ability to bring okay. forward more or to feel the energies. Um, if we're saying, well, it must be this specific constellation, this specific race of specific, I mean, there's, there's so and, much. And not to say that we don't do that or we can't right. intend that. That's perfect. If you want to do that, that's fine. Or if you, we all resonate with a specific what frequency is that we're just big balls of frequency um there's a bird that just landed right outside and the, so the avian collective is like really strong here <laughs> um so it's another thing you know it's a believing that that bird that just came to me is a sign that sent that said oh the avian collective is here yeah and they and definitely people, they definitely love you yeah so. and, and, <laughs> <laughs> But, um, but the thing, too, is, is that when the, when the information first started coming in, in the forest, the very first collective, if you will, they said to me, we are the series of the light. We are a collective of energies, not necessarily individuals, but energies with read to assist the human as consciousness, as well as Gaia, the planet, together. We have agreed to assist you, humanity, in sending you information um, for reflection of all of those. They're a reflection of. It's almost like the Pleiadian said, okay, here's some of our energy. The Lyran said, here's some of ours. The Syrian said, here's some of ours. But nothing's separate from anything. So it's more like a visualization for us. Yeah, right. Exactly. In order for us to comprehend. And it's a picture that makes more comfortable. And so they were able to say to me, realm, and you just happen to be able to tap into a little bit of all of that at the same time. So... Then came the written star languages. Then came the translations. Then came, you know, the more information and the more downloads and the more understanding high between the synchronicities. Yeah, yeah. It And it all started to just, like, flow through more easily, and then it just became, like, second nature. And, and so that's kind of how this goes, which is really cool. And so I did want to mention, you typically seem to connect with um, the emissaries of the light connect collective pretty frequently. So, um, as far as they go, as far as their, um, their whole collective, because you do have such a instantaneous connection with them, it seems, I mean, from even hanging out with you, that's kind of the impression I got, um, um, with them. Cause I did, we're getting this push for, under better understanding our connection our collective connection to our higher heart so then i would like to ask if the emissaries of the light collective um would have any any guided information in regards to that stronger connection to our higher heart and how that could help us um, transform our reality better into what we desire yeah that, i mean yes Definitely. I mean, it's, um, there's been a bunch of springboards that I, I was from, so I think I'll just um, start with the idea that beginning dismiss what we feel is too simple. And that which we feel is too simple because we think it's not going to get better. Therefore, we don't even try before we even get out of the gate. We don't even accept as the key to that. 
the key to opening the higher heart. We listen, we listen to the information, but yet they tell us, me, <laughs> we don't apply it. So what you said about trying. So what they are really saying, the big message I get frequently is, it's got to be about 11 hawks flying over my head, right outside my door. This is the weirdest thing. Um, so, <laughs> don't use the tools that we, we cont continue to listen to YouTube and read stuff and listen to other channels. But yet, when you walk away from the technology, We know it, but we don't do it. And if you don't do it, you won't see the results of it. Why is my life no different? Why is my reality not changing around me? Why don't I have the things that I say I want? Because finding the frequency. They, they give me this picture and, our, and and I the, the languages are like right there, so I I, I kind of always want to go back and forth because that's kind of you know how I like to do that. <laughs> um, but they're like, okay, just. We are told to touch nature. We are told to guide it, not told. We are invited to look ourselves in the eye. We are invited to look each other in the eye. We are invited to touch we are invited to smell the sky and offer our arms ask source to fill us yet we don't do the work and the work is so simple those 30 minutes of quiet in that place where you bring your mind into the place within your heart space and you just stay there. That's the work. Eating beautiful food, that's the work. Feeling your toes in the grass and the sand and your face and skin to the sun and the sky. That's your work. Your joy is your work. Your play is your work. Your work is your play. Beautiful breathing. Not shallow, anxious. When you see those numbers on the clock, stop and breathe. Just breathe. Be grateful that you can breathe. Have you ever been sick and haven't been able to breathe? It's horrible. You can't taste. Death for granted, the very thing. Water, again, we bring up water. It carries everything, everything. And yet, do not set it in the sun. Place our intentions in it. Place our healing in it. That's our work. The information that comes to you like that with a friend. When you bathe at your toes, your hands, that which you have brought to this creation. And if you have no toes or hands, ask yourself, then what is my service? 
this with what I do have. I chose this body. Why did I choose it? Why do I hate it? Why do I not love it? Compare it to another body, vessel. It's like comparing your car to your next door neighbor's car. Why? You chose this. Count your beautiful toes. Have you ever stubbed your toe? It's horrible. She ate those toes as they walk you through your day. Do you appreciate your knees when they don't hurt? Do you appreciate your teeth, your ears? Do you look at yourself in wonder and beauty? Do you see the world around you that you've created? This is how you find your higher heart. Draw. Share it. Don't hide it and hold it. If you drew it, somebody needs to see it. Other side to the other coin. If you feel it, you see it, you envision it, it is. It is your reflection. Everything is a reflection of your current vibration. Love it. And if you don't like it, change. And that is the work. Find a way to change vibration. Find a way to be in joy. Find that place of grace. That says, thank you for being created. I am here for something. What is my service? I've given to myself. And how may I serve? For in serving, I serve the all. How may I serve myself in pure joy in this now? How may I find when I cannot feel it, find it, hear it? Show me my spirit guides when I cannot find clarity, when I cannot understand why I am in pain. Pain of gratitude. Look with you. You are the burnt stick. You can draw anything. You have all the tools you already need. Channels, you've listened to the information. What star system am I from? Ask yourself, yourself, who am I? Listen to the answers. Write them down. Trust the information. This is the work. The work is to be in joy and resonate in joy and resonate the world. But not with that expectation. Only with the expectation that you wish to be in joy. These principles. You weigh, you respond to your creation. You weigh, you respond to the eyes in the mirror. The way you respond of the human before you that has agreed 
to share this moment with you. Find that moment. That is your work. No toshinara kua hayama kitaru sunea. Kua alukumba tajushinia walam hayama ki. So to shiawa iwa iturisia. You want to connect to the angels. You want to connect. You want to connect to your ET families. Where am I from? Nothing preventing you from connecting, but your belief that you can or cannot. Trust this place inside of you. The key to opening your higher heart is to begin by asking, how may I be of service to my highest self for the answer? Moment by moment. We are not talking about grand epiphanies here either. It could be as simple as, what would I like to drink right now? You must change yourself. in order to change what you see around you. For your perception is your reflection. Perception is reality. Understand of your emotions. And you open it for your higher heart. What I feel this way. And immediately are given the answer. It's what you do with that information, your work. Did it you continue to behave? Or do you finally turn and walk in a new direction? to discover what that new behavior holds. So open for you. Remove the word should with I would like, I am, I prefer. What doesn't get done in the end of the day didn't need to be done. Time does not control you, you control time. When you fill a moment with joy, like an eternity, think about how much fun you can have in three days. It can feel like a week, or it can be like an eternity. When you fill your moments with joy, you lose time. You do not age in that time that you are in pure bliss and joy. You know this when you drive and can't remember how you got there. You know this when you're drawing or meditating, the time flies, you don't age, you extend your life. Your bliss, just like being in love, timeless, ageless, limitless, When you connect with your higher heart, you 
understand love. This must be love for yourself. Feel the beauty of source surging through you. Think of the love that you feel when you look in nature at your beloved pets, companions of energy, for they really are companions of energy. How many of you have said who rescued who? Of that unlimited love is only a fraction of what the source feels for you. Free way. It is only in the seeing of your own perfection that you can unlock. beauty of all that you are within you. Express yourself in every way you came here to express yourself. Reflection of all that is. But it is only a breath. A breath of time, as you know time. It is only in this way, in this now, in this here, that you can experience this. Let's do the work. Be grateful for the bed, the pillow, the shoes. Everything is your creation. Everything. When you are in resistance to your creation, you become ill at ease, unable to be yourself, unable to shine, unable to see the beauty of your own creation. When you see the beauty of your own creation, here. When you can have a conversation with your own eyes, you are unlocking the door to your higher heart. When you can have a conversation looking into the eyes of another, without expectation, You have found the key to your higher heart. Embrace transaction, interaction. So they are a gift for you, by you. It is you. And you are supported beyond measure. Angels and guides, your ancestors, they're all with you, always. You are all conscious channelers. You are walking. You have a body that your higher self, you, your etheric being, speaks through. You're all conscious channelers. Every time you talk, you're channeling something, someone some frequency of what frequency not whom do you wish to emit and share intention is your work Tarisa ni inan tu tirisabiko alahena, sotor shiao. Anuko apo lu kaya tar shiara wa alukoni itu sopoa, tu sopo hakishina, sator shiara. In every synchronistic 
joy. Comfort zone. It's you speaking to you to be new in this now. Lost is the need to cling to past lives. Life. They're all now. Everything is here and now. You feel as you ascend dimensional connection. You feel the connection to all of you, the all the aspects of you, the diamond crystalline of you. Do not deny any of it. This is your time to shine. You brought you here in this now for a reason. Why? You are why you were created. It's simple. No toshiyama ke sitoshiyawa alukoti ki anatosa yawana ki otoshiyawa alukoyama kolokoi ki ara sotoshiyana. And we are one with you in this perfection. Any other way that we may have be of service to you today? We do have some questions. Please. The first question is in regards to what you had been talking about earlier with frequency. Um, you had mentioned that the reason we can't manifest the things we want is because of the wrong frequencies. So um, General was asking, what are the right frequencies then in relation to that statement? The right, the right frequency is the right frequency, meaning the right frequency that brings you into the frequency of that which you desire. So right or wrong is simply a perspective, yes. When you visualize desire, you become the frequency of it by experiencing what that experience would feel like. The feeling that is by the excitement of that experience, frequency. That is the frequency that you must, if you will, in order to realize for real that frequency for you in your three-dimensional manifestation. So yes, let us say that there is no wrong or right frequency. It's the frequency of that that you must recreate while Letting it go, we might add, because frequency of the lack also prevents its manifestation. To the question more clearly. Yes, I believe so. Um, Max, did you say you had a follow up for that and thank you wendy thank you oh sorry max i had muted you um sorry one second let me see if i can unmute you here do, do, do. okay all right max you're good all right one of the criteria is purity you might decide today I will eat healthy next day you will decide I will be happy and you can decide I will change my relationship with my job one day you can decide I will change the structure of the relationship in my family one by one it's a good step but to bring to the purity you have to do it all by itself all together 
altogether. Um, breathe and smell and feel and see different parts of yours might be in conflict. So bringing it together, bringing it into resonance, bringing it into purity, that's, that's a trick, the answer. Purify and jump, dive, trust the new you. Purify new you, trust the guidance. That's it. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, we have a question next from General. Um, General, are you able to unmute your microphone? Yeah, is this working? Yep, we can hear you good. Cool. Um, it's nice to meet everyone in this room. I've never actually interacted with uh, people like yourself, so it's, it's been interesting. Well, welcome. This is really exciting. I had saw that you um, mentioned that you're a physicist in the, in the side chat, and you just, did you randomly come across us then? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm in Australia. It's like one in the morning, so I'm a little bit of a night owl, and uh, yeah. I just typed in Hangouts just to see if there's any live on YouTube, and I noticed this one, and so I was like, oh, okay. Oh, boy. Well, this is an interesting thing to randomly come across, so uh, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome, I and... I sure love to know. I, I, hello, and welcome. I'm Wendy. Um, I would sure love to hear... A physicist point energy and frequency with relationship to channeling. If you have any comment on that, that would be fabulous. <laughs> well, he had actually right. just asked a question about that. So yeah, General, please. Yeah, please yeah that's that's you know that that's why I asked that question um, because I'm thinking you know like a physicist. I'm thinking um, I was trying because I was trying to by verbatim quote what you said. Um, so, like, and then you responded by saying, uh, there's no right or wrong frequency, it's just that the joy that you experience means you're on the right path. And then that, that sort of does make sense from a physics perspective because, say for example, the electromagnetic spectrum, um, you have a range of frequencies, but our eyes can only see within what's called the visible spectrum uh, between 400 nanometers in wavelength and 700 nanometers away. So basically the, the colors of a rainbow. Now, I'm wondering if, if you could give some form of discrete uh, definition of what you mean by frequency, because if you are on the right frequency, then could you put like a number to it? Like, um, say if, if I'm seeing red, then obviously that's a certain frequency and wavelength. Um, Obviously, I can't see infrared or ultraviolet because my eyes do not see those frequency ranges from a, from a physics context. So, is frequency like that, or are we talking about something totally beyond? Uh, you know, well, I'd have to say, yeah, I so, would have to say, from a spiritual and a scientific point of view, um, with my very limited scientific perspective, I will add. It's the same. It's it's all of that. It's all of that. Um, we on a regular basis frequency of color. I actually have been downloaded, if you want to call it downloaded, with information about what they call they meaning my. It's I don't know how well to explain it, but that the sound of color. That. Sound, sound is color, frequency is sound, frequency is color. So, our chakra systems, as many of us discuss in the spiritual world, we always associate with a particular color. And being lower end of the spectrum also represents the lower end of our lower frequency, and if you will, and this is not 
okay, Lenore Hire is, is not a judgment. It's a, it's a, it, it's like a number. It's it's not a judgment. It's not a oh, if you're in the red frequency, you're in a low frequency. It's that we all contain all of that. So when we want to, for example, we want to focus our intention, which also creates the frequency. If we want to focus our attention in a particular manner, facilitate a particular response in our body or a particular understanding. For example, we would say, okay, my red chakra, my lower root chakra, and the root chakra represents these ideas. These ideas are things that I feel that I'm struggling with, for example, that I might wish to create a frequency in which time there in the idea of red um, so that I can aware of my body and my my energetic body with respect to its connection to my physical body um and so Wendy, the uh, rainbow real quick sorry if you could just talk slightly bit slower because it's it's breaking up a little bit we're, we're okay though so sorry to interrupt keep going thank you i appreciate i appreciate that and i used to talk a little fast and maybe that's already has that already started to answer the question should i let me, you know. Max does have a follow up, and I know Max yep. will have fascinating things to add with his background. Yes, Max. Max is a oh. oh, Wendy, yeah. please continue. Wendy, please continue. I was just asking if General had any, does that start to ask the question or do you want, do either of you want to elaborate on, on any of that so far? General, would, would you like to clarify? Oh, he's, he's in the middle of something, making tea. Okay, okay, um, but it sounds like he can still hear, so actually max maybe if you would want to add on that so yes frequencies yes the model of the world remains the same the world is built on waves which have frequencies particles like photons atoms which are like balls and you can count them and numbers numbers and sacred geometry so these are all components of the construction of the world and sacred geometry is all there in crystals and molecules yes now that world is constructed by the spirit by the spirit and the spirit is much bigger it goes way beyond the physicality it goes way beyond the measurable waves it's also built on waves with and frequencies particles and numbers geometry so when i connected to the spirit through different frequencies so the frequencies of our atoms frequencies of our molecules macromolecules cell components cells tissues nerves and the brain the brain is huge the brain is connected to the spirit and the brain connects to the spirit through the frequencies and these frequencies are the frequencies of the chakras as well high chakra is high frequency lower chakra low frequency the distance between the brain and the different vertebrae in the spine so being pure means the thoughts in your brain resonate with each other they in sync synchronized to each other they agree with each other and, be, and being impure means you want and you're afraid you love and you feel offended 
You want to go and you want to stay. You want to trust and you're suspicious. You want to be with everybody, but not everybody agrees with you. You want to love everybody and some individuals make you angry. So purity means solve these, solve all of these unsolvable discordances when frequencies don't resonate with each other, when they fight each other. Make yourself pure, pick up the ones which resonate, pick up the ones which agree with each other and make you stronger. Now, the heart of the civilization has been broken. The sickness continues, but now it's in a heart attack. It is a heart attack. And use it as a prompt. Use it as a suggestion. Now, there is a flux of energy. There is a big wave coming to you. It will shake the world. And you can reflect. So now you have to choose. Before now, you could choose to be pure. Now you have to choose to be pure because there is no other way you can survive. So breathe in. Pick up what is really you. Pick those, choose those vibrations which, is, which are really you, which is your inner self, which your higher self. Make choices. Pick friends. Make choices. Pick people. Pick social directions. Pick social ideas. Choose what to listen to and purify yourself. There is no other way you can stay afloat. Thank you. Thank you. That, Namaste. That was beautiful. That is so cool. Max, um, can you maybe just touch quickly on your background with um, um, science and what you do? Because I feel like it might be cool to bring up at this moment, maybe. This is Max. Uh, Max is, has experience with physics, Mr. Molecular Biology. Most of experience is in genetics, DNA working chemically with love with DNA, yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, can you say your name again? Who, who am I Maku. speaking with? Maku, Max is higher self. Maku, okay. Ma wonderful, I thought it might be you. Um, very we are cool. together, we are together. Max is here too. Yes, wonderful. Um, yeah, Elle, it looks like Elle has a question. Elle, are you able to unmute or do you want me to read? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Hi, hi everyone. Hi Max, hi Mako. I'm really happy to be here today and to say hi. And um, I would like Mako to, to tell a little bit about the, the, the way Max went through in order to get to his higher self and to be so happy to be channeling it today. Thank you. Thank you. Wendy, if you have anything to add in relation to your question, please go after me. Yes, um, the secret is be with the enlightened ones. Crave their, them uh, not in the body, not in physical anymore. So connect to them spiritually. Read their books. Watch their videos. Be with people people of higher vibration, crave that higher vibration, make choices. And the hardest choice is when you feel the mood goes down, when you feel sadness, make a conscious choice to smile and say, that's all right, whatever. That's the mantra, whatever, that's all right. I will look up from the bottom of depression, look up and say, that's all right, whatever. I will go up. And invite, invite, invite. Don't push, don't just invite. Yes. And as you invite, the formula is, the formula of your meditation, the mantra. 
is give me another life give me another piece of life give me another ball of energy give me another hope and i will deserve it i will work hard to have have had deserved it i will work sufficiently i will work fully i will invest myself into making it happen the secret is you can invite a higher self to be yours oh fluid especially now you can blend into a new higher self as you grow as your spiritual body grows of your soul is connected and what is more interesting what is more surprising the past is changing so when you discover your higher self is here you discover it was here all the time in the past you just jump in a new timeline when it was yours all the time so grow into your higher self and embrace it be it it's a choice it's a choice it's a choice thank you Maku, before um, we have Wendy elaborate more, if there's anything she wants to say in regards to connection to the higher self, you had just mentioned jumping into that timeline, which brings up a whole another topic, right? Um, is there anything you would like to briefly touch on in regards to us navigating timelines because we are jumping timelines billions of times a second. So how we can use that understanding to better create our reality. Timelines, can you hear me? Yes. To understand timelines, understand the choices are yours. The free will is the main principle of the universe, of this universe, of this creation. So nobody, has a right to affect your free will. So the future is not defined. Every time you choose, you jump into a new branch of the timeline. And what is a miracle is that whatever you choose, whatever you choose, the timelines of your choices, the branches of your choices, and the branches of choices of other people branch together and come together thread together into a major bigger timeline so no matter what you choose like many branches of the river many sleeves of the river come together in one big river you all comes together in one big river and this big river splits again into two major timelines often and now and one is up and one is down to salvation one is to destruction one is to ascension one is to descension downfall the civilization have fallen many times the biggest one was the destruction of Atlantis now the timeline was going up 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 and now there is a big blow the heart of the civilization is broken and the main question you might ask yourself is how did they have happened how did they happen to how did they happen to jump into this timeline <laughs> how did they end up here you might blame your choices you might blame your moods or ever make a choice to treat it as a gift this timeline has more drama this timeline has most drama and in this timeline you can become a hero you can play a hero journey and save the world and every one of you has that opportunity to become a hero and the hero it is just a prompt it is just a prompt for you to become a hero smile and breathe thank you
That was incredible. That is so cool. Thank you, Maku. Um, uh, Elle, is there anything you, any, well, actually, let yeah. me first ask Wendy. I would just uh, just want to say that uh, I think most of us uh, had this as a child, um, our, our child dream to save the world. That was our main dream as we grew up. Before we knew what is to be a, an adult and to go to work, we all dreamed that we want to save the world. Yeah. So thank you, Maku. That is so true. I know for myself, absolutely. Definitely. Um, Wendy, in regards to timelines or higher selves and connection, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah. All, wow. Just all of that. First of all, thank you, Al. It's so good. I never, I rarely get to uh, interact with you, so I'm very excited that you're here. I always love being in your energy and love uh, spending time with you um, in the astral. So it's beautiful that you're here today and. All, uh, it's like okay, it's flying in. Okay, so um, as far as as far as moving through the timelines, this really is a good get back to where we were a few minutes ago about talking about frequency in that how we do that, how we move through the slideshow of timelines by. Our frequency and um, and by intention of course um, the wanting to interact a higher part of ourselves um, and what was the other part uh, there was what was the other part of that question Bree um, con connection to higher self, how to better establish and grow that and bring okay. that in if that's what you choose. That's what I thought. And so that, that one of the things, okay, that was just reminded me from um, something that I heard in, in, in a session was sure focus on your aura. And you can, and if you can focus on, and they're and they're sitting in my head telling me this is still all about frequency and that, um, and color, and, and then you put your focus on the very outer edge of what you feel is your aura, it's where you can connect to your higher self. If you can visualize that. Um, Also wanted to just reiterate what Maku said about sacred geometry. All whether it's whether it's these light codes that are coming through, which I've got just literally getting volume um, and these symbols and languages, written languages is all part of that whole sacred geometry uh, frequency. Um, I myself is, have experienced, as have other people, either having it in their conscious awareness or in their dreams or in their meditations, where these symbols are literally floating, us, me, them, as if they're floating in the air, they're all over the walls, as if it's a holographic projection if you will, of these symbols. And so to me, it feels like we are in another frequency, um, another timeline, if you will, um, where we're able to see as we know, well, as we believe, our we're Numbers also create a reality if you go, want to get into the ones and zeros and all that. So, which is uh, actually, I don't even, I can't even tap into that right now. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the world is the mechanics of everything. And, and obviously, I should leave this to the scientists, but is, is about 
number. And so when we can understand that all of this is connected, um, it broadens our multidimensional understanding, which raises our vibration, which allows us to move to a different reality. That's how it's all really connected. The fact that we are more and more of us are becoming aware of these um, ideas is showing us all that we are moving all together in that same, as, as Maku said, we're all moving together in that same timeline. Um, it all gets very, very physics <laughs> and all very complex. Um, and, and, you know, we could talk about that for days, but um, this is indeed all connected. And this is the way you slip if you will, to connect to your higher self, to your multidimensional self. A permission slip. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I know that. That's why I was like, okay. I know that term has. Yeah, permission slips. <laughs> it's come up so much recently um, in a lot of material, I think, out there. And, you know, some people are like, oh, it's being overused. Okay, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but the, the basic understanding is literally anything is a permission slip, right? Anything. Me drinking yeah. this delicious organic coffee <laughs> is a permission slip. Exactly. To. Oh. Permission slips. I'm sorry. I don't want to lose the strain of thought. Permission with, a, yeah. with the idea also permission slips with sacred geometry. They wanted me to remind part of the reason why I started doing videos with the languages is the alchemy of the light codes of nature for geometry that appears in day life. Us higher dimension information that we aren't even aware of just the way for example the way the lead the way the branches crisscross the way that everything in our reality is a an example sacred geometry we're always being which is light codes we are light bodies being food okay light is our food so when you see colors or you're looking at the sacred geometry of the, the, the things around you being fed um, light information. And I always equate it to our fiber optics. Look at the uh, massive amounts of information that we can visualize by going through a fiber optic cable. We are, but we're bazillions of them. So we're constantly being fed the sacred geometry, which is also another permission slip, is our vibration in order to even formulate and process new information. The raising of our, our consciousness and that the more we feed ourselves with this, it feeds on itself. The more we do this, the more information we are able to process, not only individually, but individual, of course, is, you know, our own light body. But the more meaning, the more be aware you become of your multidimensional selves. And how, and then knowing that, so we go, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, knowing that actually does change, navigate in your three-dimensional reality. That's how that affects this. It changes how you react. It changes how you look at your life. It changes how you judge things. It changes how you look at yourself. It it, it, all of a sudden, you realize myself. It's, it's a part of who I am. I just need to look at it. But it's just another part of who I am. So... All of this information is constantly being fed to us and it's our awareness and our using it as permission slips in order to be more aware of it and use it and in our intentions. 
and, and going out and seeking when I'm feeling sad, when I'm feeling like a do I, I'm confused or I don't understand or what is my purpose or, I mean, I, for as long as I remember since I was a little kid, I, I too was, I'm here to save the world. How am I supposed to do that? I'm just one person, you know? So I think everybody who's in this room, everyone who's watching, I think we've all experienced that uh, to change things in a massive way. That's why we're here together. And all of these are permission slips for us to become aware of that and of, of, our, of our tribe and who we, our vibe, like they say, you know, your, your vibe is your tribe, your tribe is your vibe. Look around you, what are you attracting? That's the vibration, that's ascension. Awareness, ascension is awareness. There's so much that can be brought into this with the frequencies rising and the Schumann resonance of the earth rising with the spiritual ascension of the earth and all life on it. And, and the fact that we're going from a carbon based reality to a silicone based reality and there, our DNA is activating and the light codes coming in. And I mean, we could just keep on going and going and our bodies will be transforming and everything. But, <laughs> Not to get too far off track, Max, you said you had a follow-up. Oh, yes. Oh, the synchronicity and randomicity. As going into nature, you feel random things sending you messages. And the reason is that... The randomness is the area of the spirit. Random things, things which happen by chance, are in full control of the spirit. This illusion of reality is designed wonderfully, beautifully. You have a, an illusion of everything being developing by itself according to physical laws but there is a randomness programmed in this illusion randomness is everywhere what email comes to you next moment what phone call what people you meet on the street it's all random right it's supposed to be all programmed by the physical laws but it is not it's an illusion that it is and if you start investigating, you get to quantum mechanics where you just realize, yes, it is random. It is random. And that's how you communicate to your spirit guides, to the angelics, to higher dimensional beings, to the mother, father, God, to the creator, to the nature, to their universal consciousness. You dived in here to make mistakes. You dived in here to forget. It's a haunted house. Yes, it's a haunted house. Remember the words written on hell. Anybody coming here, leave the hope, right? That was the message when you saw before coming here. <laughs> Leave the hope. You are destined here to make mistakes. It is part of the reality. You will not stay here. There is a team of, of wise, conscientious spirits working on giving you the disease and death. It's okay. It is a way to live this dream. It's a, a way to come back home. Accept it with gratitude. It's all an illusion. And in this illusion, you can speak to your spirit guides, angelics, higher dimensional beings through the randomicity. You ask the question and look and watch what random things tell you. Ask a question and get the answer. That's the easiest way to get guided. 
easiest way to be guided and then again you have to make choices and again there is no good choice there is all bad and bad so you have to be, make choose between but that experience of making choices is the goal of your being here it's the purpose of life to life to have that experience of making choices that's the purpose of life every other purpose you choose but this purpose you chosen you have chosen when coming here and when the creator mother father creator looks down at you it's inside it experiences that experience of making choices so the creator experience its own creation experience itself the creator experiences itself through your making choices and the global consciousness the universal consciousness ask itself why did i make this error why did i make this choice why i am making constantly these choices <laughs> the laws of luck and mischief the laws of randomness are pre-programmed by planets by astrology by waves of dimensional energy so from day to day same things turn to you different angles with different facets sometimes love is wonderful and sometimes the love if is tough accept it embrace it and make your choices wisely by choosing to breathe choosing the light choosing to represent the creator down here to to represent your higher self down below and this way you purify Purity is the answer. Love is the answer. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you, Maku. Uh, L, you said you had um, something you might wanted to you might have wanted to add. Yes, I will quickly follow up for the everyday examples and how can you create your reality and just make your own choices unbelievable to you. Um, first of all, just excuse my English because I speak so many languages that from time to time I really start to mix it up. So, excuse my accent and my language, but I hope you will get uh, the main idea. And um, as my higher self and me like to, to put the info into small pieces so it will be very digestible and easy to, to comprehend, I would love to give some personal examples about this. How, many, how can you create your reality and to see the magic going on in your everyday life, in your communication with the people you see, with the people you didn't expect to see, just to give them the energy and the positive vibration, just to, to, to help them make a different choice uh, after the moment they met you. Because you never know the impact you give to others just when you say hi to them when you ask them how are they, are they okay, if you want to help them for some reason, you make their life different. You, you just, um, how to say, you just have uh, synchronized their energy with yours and you just have changed their next decision in the next moment. So this is very interesting and um, I would just say as an exercise, when you go out and you go for a walk and you want to cross this, you always cross the street at that point that it should be crossed. Well, just cross it a little bit further or a little bit before that, or just go some other way, not the typical one, and see what will happen. Just have this uh, random exploration of life just have this different idea to do something and before you start discussing it with yourself why why have i wanted to do this exactly 
just do it before before you think why. Just do it and see what will happen. Thank you. Wendy, why don't you use languages of lights to bring the answers from above? Shimaba, <laughs> Satiriki la kotari sapalohane e lumaya alokotarikia ataki so so sopa. Tikiala e hiyama lo pasta, tashi payala ali, luku po shaya, ni tikiya atar sipala koli ina, sotur sopula haluma, i pa tashua atokua. Um, one of the basic things that they're transmitting is they're saying pull from yourself pull from all aspects of yourself pull from pull from of each dimension that you are pull from the emotions of not emotions pull from I'm having a hard time actually um, translating what they're saying. I don't know what they're saying. Um, and they're saying experiences are, are felt, not thought. Um, to bring in the frequency, experiences of all of your other aspects into your now. As they are all present, we make every moment. Each one is a reflection to you for that particular moment. Ah, into you, this energy from each one of these facets of you in a particular moment. And I'm not even sure if really this answers the question directly. This is simply the information I'm receiving. It does, it does. Yes, purity, yes, self, yes, feeling, yes, uh, intuition. <laughs> you make a choice and then you feel how it reflects into you. And when it reflects wonderfully, the new energy is coming. And when the energy is coming, be in grateful state. And in any moment, in joy and in sadness, Connect to the Creator, thank the Creator. Connect to the higher energy. Choose to be a conduit. Choose to be a channel for divine energies. And then you'll be given them. And then you'll have to choose how to use them. It's easy to go when you are in positive balance, when you're in happiness. But when you're in sadness, when you are in trial, it's much harder, but still look above. Still keep the answers coming from above. Be guided. <laughs> Be guided. And if nothing is coming, do nothing. It's a very choice to do nothing when nothing is coming. Look inside yourself. There is always a time to look inside. There is always a time for, for retrospection. 
And until you get inspiration, just sit tight and listen. Sit tight and listen inside. Go into nature and listen. And it will come. There is no other way around. The answer will come. And the new waves of storm are coming. The new waves of social unrest is coming. Of financial unrest is coming. So there will be a lot of disturbances. And then you will have to choose the purity by dropping the old luggage. <laughs> That's the main work you're doing now. You, if you cannot solve the problems, consider yourself to be an observer. You came here in part to be just a neutral observer, to be here, to experience, collect that experience. And every time you meditate, every time you go sleep, intend to send all your experience up. And you, as you send your, all your experience up, you purify yourself from the dirt you collected during the day. Purify yourself from discordance, dissonance, chaos you collected during the day, negativity, even pure negativity. Send it up. In exchange, your cells will be filled with light and energy. And ask for guidance, you will get the guidance. And the law of attraction says two similar waves attract each other. Two similar waves resonate with each other. So by making this choice, sometimes you have no energy, but collect a little bit tiny sparkle of energy from inside and make that choice. And feed it with your love and grow the new fire from it. Grow the new fire. And as you grow the new fire, the energy from the outside, the energy from beyond comes to you and welcome it, be grateful for it. And always the new fire will force you to drop something old. The new forces you to drop something old. So work hard, clean up, clean up, clean yourself up, drop old stuff, drop old luggage. And have faith. Sometimes it takes bravery, takes courage to drop old stuff. See, how can I be without that? But if you feel it's right, just drop it. Decide, it's not mine anymore. For example, responsibility for other people. Sometimes, just realize they are, they are protected too, they are guided too. So sometimes you can trust that they will make right choices. Or you can trust that they make their choices and learn their lessons. So trust, trust, trust. Purity choice positive choice feel yourself an observer and clean up your luggage and trust that you're you're guided and everything will be just fine thank you thank you Maku. yes it is so simple complex yet so simple um the trusting, the allowing, and the um, resetting of the vibration for not only your own good, but the collective good, um, maintaining our, our own personal vibration, no matter what is happening around us. Uh, that is a strength that we can work on and, and grow every single day if we would like to, and I know it is increasingly helpful especially for those around us who um will need that solace sometimes that um that person who is maybe more balanced and um centered to come to um in in harder times and um so with that said, I think now would be a good time to, because we're getting close to the hour mark here, we're getting close to ending, but um, I did want to tie in 
galactic light languages, soul language, um, and these different forms of communication that are different from what we're used to speaking earth languages, let's say. Uh, but this is, it's all the same. It's all related speaking in tongues. Um, ultimately everything is just frequency as we've discussed, but there are certain languages and symbols um, that have a higher frequency or that are actually multidimensional and are able to heal, uh, rebalance energy, um, do things in ways that even sometimes hard to comprehend. Um, Wendy, I know that you have some galactic symbols near you that you have drawn. I know your audio and video are whatever, but um, maybe this would be a good time to show some of those symbols quickly and just touch on the fact that we all have access to this. And if it's exciting for you, if you want to learn more, you can open yourself up to um, bringing through these languages, remembering these languages, because ultimately it's just remembering, um, or, or even just hearing and seeing them is beneficial in ways that are, there's so many levels because um, there's so much healing that comes through and, and actually um, galactic languages can, with the intention set, um, can help us to activate many parts of ourselves, not only to speak galactic languages, but activate our DNA, um, activate past memories, activate um, our chakras. There's, there's so much. So maybe to end here, oh, actually before, before we even um, move for, oh, here, Wendy, let me, I'll, I'm on your camera now, so as soon as the video clears up, hopefully we can see some of those symbols. Um, General, what is the question you had in relation to this? Please, go right ahead. Um, yeah, um, I guess it, it comes down to uh, what is a language, and how do you define the symbols as a language um, because I'm thinking right now we're, we're using English and English the, the fact that we are able to communicate is because there's a certain syntax there's a grammatical structure to to the you know to, to this thing that we call the language uh, it's it's logic um, now is there a systematic approach to showcase that these symbols have a repetitive um, syntax. So, for example, the word "and" uh, in English, like "a and b," there's a certain shape to it. There's three uh, letters uh, that comprise the word. Um, you know, in languages, you have nouns, verbs, uh, adverbs, adjectives. You know, things like that. Um, are these things associated with, in this case, this? galactic language that does a galactic language have these properties so that we can know that it is indeed a language uh, my immediate answer I and Wendy I, I know we can all speak on this but um, I do believe some of them work maybe slightly similar but there's so much variation and really it comes down to frequency um, and so these languages mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, Max, go ahead. Let us address that. So, um, yes, there is physical part of the language. There is mysterious part of the language. Or come to other country, if they immerse in the language, they learn it way faster. When you speak language, you, you might think that it's all physical, all here in the brain, and it's not. There is tons of it coming through through your molecules, through your cells from the other side. There is English egregore archetype in in the world beyond. So it comes through. And when you're inspired, it comes through inspired. When when you're un, uninspired, it comes through uninspired. 
you can speak the same language on, on higher level and lower level. And lots of mysteries are kept happening in the language. Sometimes people start speaking other languages. People in, after certain trauma, they just remember language they never experienced before. So lots of mysteries are there. With galactic languages, miracles happen as well. What is most exciting, and that's the best proof we get, different people on YouTube come up with a specific galactic language, which they even sometimes don't know what it is. They just speak it and record it on YouTube and publish. And when you recognize that you're speaking the same language without war, that is so much happiness. It's the best proof which we, we got right now. Just people come together, they have been speaking that language for years, and then they just recognize the same language. Brie and Brooke speak the same language. We just discovered last night. Ah. Uh, but, exactly. you know, Wales, one of the principles of this illusion is that you are not permitted to get hard proof that it is illusion. There are different hints, tons of hints that it is an illusion. It kind of, the matrix kind of has glitches, so you can use the glitches to understand it as illusion. And when you look carefully, you, the miracles come more and more often to you, but it's really hard to catch it, really hard to catch it statistically, significantly for others to prove, hey, we are in the matrix. No, 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 no. It doesn't work this way. So galactic languages, they're beautiful. You can experience them. You can meditate on them. They give you the gift of opening yourself up to channeling. They give you the gift of connecting to the spirit. You just bubble, bubble, bubble. Just force yourself to bubble. Choose to bubble. Choose to pronounce meaningless sounds. And as you do that and ask for divine connection, ask for alien connection, it comes to you because you do the step forward, they do the step forward. You do another step, they do another step. That opens up. When they first channeled the language and then started channeling, channel started to channel the translation. So the miracle is happening, but it is not allowing you, you to analyze it. It's not analyzable yet. It's not. You will come to prohibitions. The reality, the matrix will protect itself from being discovered. The illusion will protect itself from being discovered. It's not permitted just yet. Thank you. That yes. was an absolutely perfect answer, Max. I, I really could not have said it better myself. Um, it is so multi-layered and multi-leveled, and I, I just want to mention that, you know, symbols and languages have been around. We've been around. Just look at where the places we're finding them. You know, between everywhere on earth and between the pyramids, which is a whole other subject. But um, you know, we've got we've got these that are um, identifiable now as languages within one symbol. Multi-layered information um, that is contained in these symbols. And let me add too that one of the things they wanted to that this is magic. We know that magic is intention to create, to create an alchemical creation, isn't it? It's words and intention changed to manipulate matter. Or if these symbols, these galactic languages, they physically affect people. I can't explain why. I can't even explain why one day I started speaking them or how I tended to connect with the higher, yes, my ET friends, my spiritual guides. My desire was so strong that it just, so that's what that, it exactly, it's about intending to open yourself up to 
of creation that we aren't allowed to substantiate right now because it's part of the joy of the discovery. We know the real. I can't explain why I have an emotional response to someone else's languages or why they have an emotional response to mine. Yet it's real. And yet I can't describe it. And yet when I hear they say to me, this is so and so, or this is this, this is the Pleiadian High Council, this is Gaia, this is, um, you know, the, the Sasani. You have to trust that is your validation that feeling that you feel inside that place of your higher heart and that solar plexus when you know something to be true for you in that now that doesn't mean it's tomorrow or yesterday but it doesn't matter it's how does it make you feel right listening to that same thing just like you know listening to a song or reading a story it isn't always going to affect you the same way twice that's why why we read stuff more than once. Sort of like that. They affect us in a way we don't even understand because it's on such a multi-dimensional, multi-layered of source that I can't describe. I can't tell you what my experience is. Words. Um, but yet, I can convey it to your body your body just by saying it or speaking it i don't understand that any more than any of you do it is and beautiful thing i personally have ever experienced and i know for sure now it was because i wanted to connect with every civilization i wanted to know everything about everything and so when you put that kind of an intention out there, and depending how strong the energy is behind your focus, manifestation, that's how you change timelines. That's how you jump parallel realities. That's how that happens. That feeling that you get inside that sunny place inside of you that makes your heart burst and love that you can't even measure nor describe. And I, I don't, I can't say that that's even an answer. It just is what my experience is and has been from the moment I heard them. And I wasn't brought up with like a real understanding of what glossolalia was or what speaking in tongues was. I was not involved in any kind of religious background whatsoever when it came to any of that. And, um, and maybe that's why I was able to be a little bit more open than some people because I didn't have a lot of predisposition beliefs about truly. I just knew that we, from the moment I can remember knowing, we're not alone here. And anybody who thinks we are alone in this vast, immense universe, when you look up at the stars, I just knew there. it, it was not even a question in my mind. Nor was ever a question in my mind that I could could think, be, change, talk to, anything. And so when you have that kind of strength behind your belief system, um, regardless of what it is for, because energy flows where focus goes. So it doesn't matter what you're intending to understand. It's the energy behind it. And I love what Aku said about you're confused and and you're anxious and you feel like I need to make a move but it doesn't feel I don't know which way to go and my feet are in the mud and that's your spirit guide telling you don't do anything just like they said just like he said you it's your time to sit back and inquire within your higher self and say okay I must be needing some new information here. So no action is the best action for me. Oftentimes we'll find my own, myself personally when I'm having a question or a struggle in my own life. 
right away, my first instinct is, oh, I want to go hear a channeler. We're starting to hear instead, you know what? Go spend 30 minutes of quiet time with your own first and see what comes up. See if you don't get at least one answer, epiphany. So what's interesting Some is this, sorry, Wendy. No, go ahead, please. This actually ties in so many facets of what we were talking about in this discussion. We're getting close to the end time here, but there's a little bit more that needs to be said, I believe, in terms of the light languages galactic languages, it comes from the soul. It comes from the heart chakra, the, the heart, the soul center. It's actually coming from the truest form of you. When I first started speaking light languages, I was like weirded out because I didn't know what I was saying. I still kind of don't know what I'm saying, but I know now that I've had translations come through and the feeling I got, even though I didn't have like an English translation, like, oh, I said this and that. I had the, I had a feeling that it was high vibrational, that it was beautiful, that it was a, a nice warm message to share. And then when people like Jim Charles um, and Wendy have, and Will, have provided me with yeah, translations. Will. <laughs> yeah, Will. <laughs> um, Will. <laughs> I, I was immediately just like dumbfounded and awestruck and so excited that these weird things coming out of my mouth were not only a real language, I wasn't making, making it up, but... Um, it, it was from the heart. It was truly the most profound thing I had said in a long time. And <laughs> I didn't even know that I was saying it. So um, somebody had asked a question. Um, Christine had said, well, how do you download these languages then? If, if, if everything is available and everything and, and you're actually just remembering different facets of yourself. So you're bringing through languages, ways of communicating that you've done before, you're, well, you're currently doing because there is no time and everything is in the now. So you can, you can channel through that information. You can channel through um, that wow. way of communicating. So um, Wendy, would you like to touch on that, that understanding of, of downloading? I mean, how I understand it is really, it's about intention, right? If there's a specific thing you want to speak, you can intend for it to be so. And well, Right. You can be specific. You can absolutely be specific. If you feel a definite connection, for example, Christine, you know, we know how you can, you, how close you are connected to the avians. So already can talk to them telepathically. You already know that we've already talked about that before. So this is that I, okay, when I first started hearing them, I really didn't have a, okay, specific, like, I want to connect with a specific, other than I will say, my connection to Sasani was extremely strong, like, I couldn't even explain it, that and the yayo, and now I understand why, but the point is, so my focus was very strong in that direction. For example, when I first came into a light language gym, colony, that's the first place I heard them. And I listened for a long time before I ever got involved, watching videos. Then I finally got, you know, brave enough to hop into a language gym, they called them, and um, where we were just practicing. And there were very few of us that spoke the languages, but I was so fascinated immediately that it was like a switch turned on inside of me. It was like I was really nervous, and, but I was something that I was like, regurgitated me that I couldn't explain. It, but it came from inside my heart place, my solar plexus. It was like very, like a volcano kind of a thing. So. Sabrina said, you know, they were just taking turns. And she said, you know, Wendy, would you like to give it a try? I was brand new. I just said to myself, okay, this is it. Any of my 
parts of myself, my spirit guides, my ET families. If there's anybody, anything that would, anybody who wants to connect with me. And I just my eyes and started talking. I cannot explain it any more than anyone else. I'd like to know, actually, too, it's so as far as downloading, it's not a matter of thinking. It's a matter of allowing. So, so if it interests you, if you have a specific energy you have to connect to, that's great. What I what they suggest is let's talk about symbols. I, I would suggest to everybody if you have a particular energy or star system, go look up stuff. Go look up symbols, go look up planets, go look up names, go look up I was a constant re I was a research junkie when it came to as soon as I started speaking languages I started looking up like star systems the Pleiades I just started looking stuff up and it started generating new information new downloads all of a sudden we were in hangouts we were all connecting to each other's other timelines past lives we concurrent lives that we had with each other we started seeing visions of each other together we started having dreams about we start dreaming about being together. It, 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 so it's not really a download that you think about. It's an intention and an allowance that says, this is just something I really want to do. Now show me spirit guides. Okay, because I'm not sure what to do here. Show me what to do. And, it's, and then just let it go. And then what happens is it's, you're going to hear something. And you're going to go, what was that? going to know now it could be in the grocery store it could be in the shower the shower oh my god if you're in water to make your first connection i've had the the most interesting light languages and 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 um connections visions uh, um telepathic conversations in the shower because we're water we're mostly water water in water of source and direct least resistance you have you know you're you have nothing on time to, to take that gratitude thing and step and say wash away down the drain all my beliefs that don't serve me and allow me to open up to this new idea this new multi-dimensional part of me that I haven't yet explored yet yeah what, wendy i'm sorry your audio is super choppy for me um sorry. and i think for other people I, I i was able to catch almost everything you said almost i will continue from from here um, oh sure yeah. um yes um yes For those who already speak in galactic languages, we thank you, we bless you, we are you, we enjoy you, we enjoy connection to you. For those who haven't started by interest, but are interested, we bless you. Go ahead, start right now. It's so easy. Just bubble, start with a single sound, om, and whatever your intuition leads to, just go there. So I will give you a little initiation and take it as an initiation. The sound will carry for you that initial push, initial spark, and take this spark and make a flame out of it. My intention is to give you the galactic languages, the connection to the galactic languages. Allah Shayamana Uraya 
El Ramayya Hello, Ramayya Hello, Ramayya. Galactic languages are a gift for you. It is a gift, a message that you are not alone. It is a direct line of connection, direct telephone line to God, direct telephone guide, direct telephone line to the guides, to the angels, to higher dimensional beings, to saints, to ascended masters, to your friends and relatives beyond. Use it. It's yours anytime. Use it. Times are coming. The time of challenges coming. The villains raise. The villains rise up. The negative energy, the demons rise up. The moral leadership is broken. So the society is dividing. The society has divided. The birth, the birth has happened. The dragon is awakening. The volcano is awakening. So, coming, but you are not alone. The challenge is coming, but you are not alone. The challenge is coming, but you are not alone. And the challenge gives you freedom. And you are not alone. Until now, you were tied by, convention, by conventions. You were tied up by conventions. You were tied up by loyalties, by your loyalties. Now your loyalties are broken. You cannot be loyal anymore because the heart of the civilization is broken. Make tough choices. You have to choose purity. You have to choose what is with you and what is not with you. What is yours and not what is not yours. You have to drop. Now you are forced to drop lots of luggage, lots of baggage, lots of weight. And you are not alone. So use the languages of light. Every time you are in trouble, start chanting start speaking and even if you don't understand the words the meaning will come to you the answer will come to you just pronouncing the which brings you the answer in your heart feel it in your heart the challenges give you energy and the energy the challenges op open up the doors for love. Now the love will pour on you like rain. <laughs> you will say too much love. And it is a wonderful state to be in. It's a present. It's a gift. Discover yourself. Discover God within you. Discover your direct connection to the angels. When you channel the languages, intend it to come from highest source. The words, when you download the chant, intend it to come from above. And it will. Because you stop makes steps to you. Move together to each other. Embrace each other. You're blessed. Amen. Amen. Namaste. Thank you, Maku. Perfectly said. Yes. And yes, if you're in fear as a kid, they tell you to sing. Hum to begin to speak the languages as well. And as you hear them, you're being activated. Your DNA is becoming empowered. 
They light up inside of you. They create a galactic connection, a little dance inside of you. Pity. Action to something very, very special. Almost a little secret. Secret. That you share with another to help them open their higher heart. So when you're speaking languages, you think your pets, it's part of the life degree. Languages together, infused with your, with your ideas, your energy, infused with your source, connection, all fit together. A new awareness. Of your presence. These are all modalities that combine. The overall frequency. So speak the languages to your body. For healing. Land. Your home. Speak them out loud out to your family. Speak them in your heart. Beauty and energy and ideas and awareness goes around you. Attitude support. Or her support. You. Brought to you. That you brought to you. For you. Part of this question. You are also part of that alchemy. Every single thing. We are all speaking the languages. See all the sacred geometry, the numbers, smells, the aroma. All of it, dance for your excitement. Combine them as you feel the joy, as you're drawn to specific thoughts, stones, crystals. And you want your body by different things on different days. Feed your soul. Feed your soul. Feed your soul. When do you push it? I'm sorry, your audio. That's okay. I'll, yeah, I was just going to say, if there's anybody who would like to comment on any of the experiences about electric languages, well, um, we did have a question. We did have a question from General, um, but I think, oh, wait, he might be back. Oh, he's back. Oh, I'm just, oh hey. My internet's choppy, so I go in and out. Yeah, no problem. Um, did You said you had a follow-up in regards to this light language discussion? Yeah. Um, you mentioned, um, for example, you said, like, light. Um, has information. Are you saying that light is intrinsically it, it, it light intrinsic to light is language or information? Is that uh, am I gathering what you're saying correctly? Then I I I believe the way I understand it visually is that the way that it's been given to me was is that there was a visualization in that we are able to send massive amounts of data. 
data through what we consider hierarchy cable. So basically, it was more of a, well, I don't know if it's literal or metaphorical, but the idea is, is that, yes, information being, being sent to us for light. This was exactly the information that was given to me immediately about why to bring in the sunlight into the videos with with languages. Yes. Okay. It's the the your sound is a little bit choppy. I, I gather okay, j just to paraphrase, because I think I gather what you're saying. Um that uh it it wouldn't be okay, let me just par re rephrase what you're saying. Like what 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 I understood from what you said. So um it wouldn't be it it, it wouldn't have the form it has if it's not if there's no language associated with it like so sunlight wouldn't wouldn't be the color it is if it if there's no beauty to it or form or uh, you know structure um or, you know so so that means everything you see around you is a language in itself That is the understanding given. Yes. Am I, yes. Am I get, is, is that correct? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Because okay. It, that's yep. how everything is created is frequency, um, sound, light. And Will, did you say that you had um, something to add on that topic? Because um, I know Wendy's audio is unfortunately going downhill right now. So. <laughs> 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 Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Thank you. Will. Sorry. Go ahead. Will. Okay. So let's start with some basics. So we'll start with the term you used early on, frequency. And I'll try to explain it so a scientist can understand and a regular layman can understand. So let's define frequency in the terms you used earlier as wavelength. And we can interpret everything in terms of frequency. So things will have a different frequency. And if we want to apply it to our physical universe, we understand that to be the electromagnetic frequency. And you mentioned earlier, we have our visible spectrum where our eyes see certain things. And then we have x-rays and gamma rays and other subsets of the electromagnetic frequency. Our physical universe is built on that concept of the electromagnetic frequency. There are other, well, let, let's continue along the lines. So we differentiate the different frequencies by wavelength. And any, we use, we'll go into tools now. So our eyes are tools for interpreting the visible spectrum of the electromagnetic frequency. Do you understand? Do you agree? Yeah, it, it, it's, well, again, a scientist would say through evolution, like a dog's eyes are different to a human's eyes. Dogs can see in the infrared, whereas humans can't. Correct. So like any tool that we use to measure, our measurement is just an estimation. It's an interpretation. So every one of our tools that we use, and our eyes are a tool, human's eyes are a tool, and each human's eyes would actually see a different range in that electromagnetic spectrum. And like you mentioned, a dog's eyes, or a cat's eyes, or anybody else's eyes. So we're all interpreting. And just like when we use a microscope or a camera, that's yet another tool to measure and interpret what is there. And we use our brains to do further interpretation and translation of what's going on. And we have other tools. So we have our eyes are tools, our ears are tools, we have our five senses, we have 
any tools that we as man know that are tools like microscopes and microphones and speakers and things like that. Now this is all based on the electromagnetic frequency. There are other spectrums out there that we have not identified yet and I believe we just all classify them that into the spiritual frequencies. Now that, now that specifically though, so um, the electromagnetic uh, spectrum uh, runs, ultimately the foundation is Maxwell's equations. So the mathematics that's, that's associated in describing the propagation of light, that it's a magnetic and a, an electric uh, wave that interpo interpolates through. So um, now, how is that, um, how, how does language reside in a photon? Uh, because, f for example, you just mentioned a uh, microphone. Now, now, I'm talking in a microphone. Um, my voice box is vibrating. Uh, so as air is pushed through and, and my voice box is vibrating, the air particles to fall into a certain frequency um, in order to, for you to, for then the microphone to take that, translate it into digital code, and then your ears are hearing what I'm, you know, I'm, so I'm communicating to you uh, in a structured, um, the, the air particles are vibrating in a structured pattern. Um, in accordance to the English language. Now, if I was speaking Kanji, or if I was speaking German, uh, or if I was speaking Hebrew, you'd, you'd be hearing a different frequency, but it would be structured according to that language. So yes. how then does this relate to the spiritual language that doesn't seem to have any dictionary associated with it? Okay, I'm going to get as there. As far as I can see. And, yeah. I, and, I love, and I love where you went because you used the term vibration. So we defined frequency earlier, which is the distance of the wavelength. And a vibration, I will just say, is a collection of frequencies. Yeah, okay? in, in a physical sense, yeah. Even in a spiritual sense. So we'll just define that a vibration is... They could be the same collection, the same frequencies in the collection, or they can be different. And the pattern of differences is, we'll call that information. Okay? And if the pattern of differences equals the color red, our eyes will see that pattern and associate that with the color red. Right. When the pattern gets more complex, and it's in a frequency that our ears, the tools our ears can pick up, then we try to gain understanding based on that information. Okay, so this is at the very basic level. I'm gonna call everything information, and there's vibration, and there's frequency, and all the tools we use are to interpret that information. So whether we see it or we hear it or we taste it, we're interpreting all that information. It, just, just a quick question though. Um, uh -huh. This in the in the spiritual context. So, in the in the physical context, notice when we're speaking English, you can't spell say the word "and" or the word "the" or the word uh, "hello." Um, you, you, they they're only spelt a certain way. You can only pronounce it a certain way. How do you know that um, you're pronouncing these spiritual words exactly the same way universally amongst you know people across the world? Like for example, we're in a hangout from across the world, each one of us. Like like how do I know that Max is indeed pronouncing the correct word for say the word and when he's translating it for us? Um, that it's the same uh, uh, phonetic sound as, say, Wendy would say that same word. 
Yes, and so I but can. It's I can not answer word for word, though. That's where we, we're getting the mistake. I mean, the the kind of the confusion. It's not word for word. Well, it's it, I can it see is. one syllable. One syllable. It can be broken down to that. And it contains that will contain an entire packet of information. Yeah, but like for example, the letter A in English, um, is there multiple See, layers to the letter to A or compare, just A? But you're trying to compare a 3D idea to a multidimensional situation. And it's it, it, believe me, we all struggle with this every day. I know I do. Also, there's different dialects, might I add. But so I mean, it, we're talking an infinite number of frequencies here that we can't even begin to understand. And I completely understand where you're going because I've been trying to figure this, uh, not figure it out, but trying to understand this as well. But the thing is, is that an and or an a isn't, and I know what you're saying, is there a universal a all over? That's necessarily true. Um, but yet I know when I hear somebody else speaking a similar language, Oh, I can speak with them and not even know what we're saying. Well, um, I, I we, we digress. Can I jump in? I'm not, okay, no, go ahead, Will. Yeah. So about that, yeah. <laughs> so going back to the basics. So you asked a question about the word a or the word and. Yeah, very, and like very simple words, like just to exactly. Use. For, for exactly. the sake of analogy, yeah. So my question, I'm going to get philosophical here and say, how do you know when I'm speaking English to you that my word and actually arrives to you with that meaning? Or how do you interpret it? Right. So, for example, if I was speaking Greek, the Greek word for and is ki. Or, or kai, depending on now. That's now that's an interesting thing. Like if you're speaking Koine Greek, which is ancient Greek, it's kai. If you're speaking modern Greek, it's ki or, or k. Um, but notice that universally for all Greeks or for all Greek-speaking people, it's always that pronunciation. Whereas for English yes. speakers, it's it's an. But. Um, but my yeah. point is, you arrive at an understanding based on vibrations that I send to you. So you arrive at an understanding, and if you arrive at the understanding that I'm intending to deliver, then you have received my word and in the English language. Yeah, it's got... It's grammatical, so it's, it's not like you didn't just make like a random blurting sound on, on the speaker. You, it, it was a structured phonetic vocalization that then my Correct. brain made, you know, made it connect to the dots. Yeah. Yes, but you came to that understanding of the grammar and the structure based on other people talking to you and by going to school and studying and studying and studying, yeah. and yeah. we have put this form upon you through many many years of study. Yeah. And, but the basic idea is that I had an intent of information to send to you and you received that intent. Right. Okay. Is that so, the same in the spiritual sense? It is. And, and no matter what language it is, see if I'm speaking ancient Greek and if, I'm saying, hey, let's go start a new hangout in 10 minutes and get there. And if you arrive, even though you don't speak ancient Greek, guess what? My communication worked. Yeah, it worked. I mean, it worked um, in the sense that um, to you, obviously, you were speaking a, a structured language. Now, with Max, though, so w when Max was saying what he was saying in that, I, I don't even know. It's like a speaking in tongues sort of thing he was doing. Um, if that's a structured language that can be tapped in, so it's, it's, it seems to have been delivered from the spiritual realm, can someone simultaneously 
repeat that with the same phonetic sounds to authenticate the fact that this is indeed a an actual thing that exi that exists in the spiritual realm. Possibly, and I like where you're going with it. So, Will and I just happen to know we speak the same language. We don't know how we know that, but we do. Okay, it's time for Neil to jump in. He's got right. he's got some vital information. Okay, so this is what I would say about the languages. Okay, I'm base I'm basically repeating a lot of stuff that both Will and um, Wendy have just said, but it's very very true. Right, these languages. When you speak these languages, when you're speaking English language, you're taught what, the questions that you're asking about, the, about these languages that are being spoken. When you're relating it to the English language, like Will was saying, you're relating that to the way that we speak English language. The way that the vast majority of languages on this planet are spoken, they are not spoken from the heart. You're you're trying to understand it on an intellectual level. And you'll never be able to understand these languages on an intellectual level because they're not spoken from an intellectual level. They are spoken from a heart level. And the information doesn't just come from the... You're looking at it and you're trying to analyze the actual words. That's not the way these languages work. They don't work by analyzing the words. They come, the messages come through the heart. And when you're speaking these languages, you're also talking telepathically to each other from the heart. The, the messages are coming from your heart to the other person's heart. You can, you're trying to put this into a context where it won't work. It won't work to try and understand this intellectually because it's not intellectual. This is well, happening well, on a different, completely different level. It, it, it yeah. is, but you can. We're just not at that level of understanding yet. There's, just, just, there's I believe it is language. possible. And we can yes, set the syntax for it, but that will be restrictive in speaking from the heart. There's certain languages, I'm sure Huclo's done it before, where there's, there's somebody was actually giving you word-for-word -word translations for what, what they are, what certain words are, and Liren, I can remember hearing that. Oh, and wow. I've heard it where I've spoke, uh, yeah, and I've heard it where I've spoke Syrian before, and I've started to, um, as I'm speaking it, if I speak it for long enough, I'll start understanding about the structure of it, and there's, there's certain, it doesn't work the same as English language. Certain words you say is, is right, okay, well, let the me grammar do this. The grammar is Let me different. Like this, right? The way that you speak English language is completely different to the way you speak a uh, language in Thailand. Because in Thailand, if you, you can say one word five different ways, and it depends on the tone that you use. And if you try and speak to somebody, it, this is where people get mixed up when they try and uh, they get they trip up when they try and speak Thai because they don't use tone because they've never done that in their life. And it is a completely new concept to them. It confuses people a lot, and there's things that I've tried to say in Thai, and I know how to tone it right. And I'll say it to people, and they've got they think I'm talking about something completely different. They think I'm talking a completely different subject, and they're looking at me like, "What is he trying to say?" To them, it is madness. But uh -huh. to to I'm me, just, it makes sense. And you, just, you have just, to, okay, sorry, go ahead. These languages, when they're spoken, there's things about them that you will never understand. You'll not be able to understand them because they are they have got different rules, rule sets that you've never ever contemplated before ever. Not yet. So, um, then what? Yeah, if, not if, yet. Okay. Yes. Well, that that now it's brought up two questions. Um, <laughs> I'm, by the way, I'm really I apologize to uh, Hu Hukolo, um <laughs> because and I know you wanted to end this, but I don't know. It's it's just intriguing, and, and hence I'm asking these questions. This is important. Yeah, exactly. So don't this worry is about it. You are okay. exactly on time for your divine appointment for this yeah. conversation to happen. Yeah. Um, and, Neil, and Neil, I want to add um, to your, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Han. No, um, no, that's fine. So it's the, um, intonation of get out of here or no really get out of here <laughs> okay go ahead so, so the question i have then is if it's if it's only from the heart and there's no intellectual exercise then why do you call it a language and secondly um again but but then will will come back and say well it is a language so 
I'm sure you're familiar with the laws of logic, the, the fundamental foundation of how this universe operates. Um, again, do these language, is, is there a way to verify um, independently that, that each one of you um, are privately tapping? Look, okay, so for example, say um, you have a classroom of 10 students who have been educated in English and then they diversify into the world. And um, so you have one in Australia, one in, I don't know, uh, Japan, one in America. Now, they may not be talking to each other, but they each simultaneously at any given moment could be speaking the exact same language because they've been taught it, they know how yes, to communicate yes, in it. Yes, that's correct. There's been studies so, done for that. There's been studies done, I don't know if you've heard of them, but there's studies that they've actually done with animals that have been in completely separate areas of the world, no communication at all, and they've taught animals on islands. How, it was monkeys they did it with, and they taught them how to do certain things. And then the monkeys on the other continent started doing the same things. Never been in contact with them ever. So th there is I, telepathic, about, there is some sort of cellular, yeah, that, cellular telepathic communication going on there. I'm, I'm also asking specifically in regards to the glossolalia, the, uh, the speaking in tongues. Um, is there a way to showcase, like for example, Will, you just, I, I don't know, you did speak in tongues just then? Then yes. languages, just spoken tongues. Is how can you demonstrate to me that, like, is there a way that you can give me like this galactic lexicon of this language that you're talking in, for me to go well, like, like, kind of like when I look at, if if I don't know Japanese, I look at uh, a dictionary between Japanese and English, so I can know how to f at least phonetically pronounce the words. Yes, and we're not there yet meaning that so Neil has been calling this uh, um, speaking from the heart. And when we speak from the heart, our ego is not involved. Um, and apply a grammar to it. And people just need to set aside the time to, and actually study it in such a way there, there is grammar to it. And just like speaking English or any other language, that as long as you achieve understanding, that's the main thing. And we'll, both sides are communicating and changing what they're saying until they achieve understanding. I so, will add quickly, I've actually seen um, um, translations of say a certain dialect of a Pleiadian language with now it's symbols and it has English phonetic pronunciations but I can't confirm if anything on that page is right based off of my mind um, this is again just like Will is saying this has to be back and forth this is going to be a whole new thing that's going to happen here on earth as people continue to find out about this stuff and it is it's very needed especially in terms of you know like well physic physicists and scientists and linguists to realize that there's the whole universe of possibilities and so and and I will also add that our languages here on earth have um, come from the diff different parts of the omniverse um, I know particularly I know Japanese I majored in Japanese in college, and there's a dialect of Shikani, which is Bashar's race. Bashar is a very, very well-known um, higher dimensional entity, let's say, that is channeled through Daryl. You can look him up, B-A-S-H-A-R. He has amazing information, absolutely incredible, timelines, all that good stuff. And he, um, their civilization, there's a dialect of it that sounds, I'm not kidding you, exactly like Japanese. Spot on exact, but the syllables are in different places. So I can't say something in Shikani and have it make sense in Japanese, but it sounds like it's Japanese. So that's one example, and there's so many. The more galactic languages you hear, the more you're like, well, that kind of sounds like Russian. Oh, that one kind of sounds like Spanish. And it's just like, because it's this hodgepodge. We are this mixing pot, this melting pot of 
the universe. We have so many different galactic influences that have come here and um, we're starting to uncover that. So sorry, Will, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I really wanted to make sure that that got added because uh, I think it's monumental. Yeah, I, I, like, I like that context. I'm just, then you see a scientist will return back and say, or ask this, this question, like an anthropologist, he'll say, well, um, languages are to do with the, well, well languages evolve um, is what they would say. So for example, English is a form of German. Um, you know, how, how do you, how, sure. they're not the same thing that, that exists. So would you I say that the galactic know. language evolves or something? Hello. Oh, sorry. I got Hello. The... This is Brian. Is this the general? Can hey, you... Brian. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Hello there, my friend. How are you? I wanted to uh, jump in here real quick and try to explain this the best I can. The only really way, like you said, to really understand the languages is we're looking for a comparison, a reference point on what these languages on how to understand them. I, I really believe just in the, as an example, uh, speaking in tongues when it comes from the heart, the spirit, you know, how would we understand that when everyone is jumping around or like just saying things, words that are just coming out, these syllables, these sounds, how do you interpret that? But the intellectual mind cannot really truly understand it, can it? It really does come from the heart. But I love how Will said eventually we will really understand these things, but it takes probably a lot of study. And also we might have to find like the reference point, something to compare it to. And they would have to, to really truly understand that. That would have to have, like you said, a, a some type of reference point to really understand these right. words languages i i get i hear as a physicist as a scientist i would really want that that would, would have to be at the at the basic to really understand it you'd have to have some type of translation a translator a universal translator but then again when you're talking about other species from other worlds or this this feeling of remembrance that comes from even the ancient languages even ancient samaritan or different how would and how would i translate that if i've never known it before how, so, so these ancient languages or something that goes way back in, in history, how could a human, an everyday average individual understand that when there's that, that's really actually what I speak. So that's actually what I speak is a form of right. ancient so Akkadian. I, I agree with Will to a certain extent. It's like, how can we remember these things? How can we connect with these things? Intellectually, it would be really hard at the beginning because we don't really have too much to compare it to unless we you know, unless you look in the ancient past, how could how could one person from one side of the planet uh, understand another person on the other side of the planet if if you know if they don't have anything to a reference point, something to study? I agree with you as a scientist. It's going to take time. I really believe it's it going to take time. Yeah, just that 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 actually um, helps the analogy. Actually, um, Brian, you you mentioned about yeah. the Sumerian script, so. Um, in the 1800s, when we were digging up the cuneiform tablets um, of Ugarit and Akkadian and, and all these ancient scripts, so yes. we wondered how Hebrew, the Hebrew language, uh, how that was derived. Then thanks to archaeology, we were able to un uncover the Ugaritic language, which is the parent to Hebrew. And then right. notice that we can then reverse engineer because yes. languages evolve, so we can reverse engineer back into the ancient script and actually now decipher what, and in fact, not only that, but you you, you said um, if there's like this universal translator for us that can help yeah. us. That would well, be, yes. Well, they, they, these, these ancient people did leave behind lexical dictionaries um, about their language, like kind of like how, say a thousand years from now, if someone wants to know what English is, well, we have dictionaries to help them if they are if they uncover it. Um, is there a same thing associated with like? Do these spirit guides do they do they actually manifest? You know, like a lexical dictionary and say, look, to make sure that you're not misinterpreting what I'm telling you. Here's you know here's some. Uh, foundational rules as to 
to properly understand, uh, you know, what I'm what, what these things are saying, rather yeah. than just make the phonetic sound and then, you know, go from there. I think it well, that's where the telepathy comes in. I think that like the evolution of the human. Um, I was just where, where that, you Brian. can feel, we can start to feel it and really sense it. Yeah. And it becomes into into the individual level. And then they start to interpret it, the feeling, the how you said that the tone. But when you do the same the algorithm, like if you were to I, I think at... it's a possibility, but I think you're right. You have to come to a reference point. Like how can we how can we say from this is exactly how, you know, like you said, the photetic sound, the pho, uh, phonetic sound, is that how you say it? Um, how this tone, how you can tell the, the structure, the difference. Like you said with the Thai language, like Neil was saying, there's five different, you know, the, the tonal and stuff. Like they've never heard the tonal. There have been different ways of saying it, and the pronunciations. I think that comes in a feeling first with these languages. I think there are <clears throat> species out there that can maybe has the universal translator that can help understand that. Like you said, the ancient Samaritans, it took time to study these things. And I, I do I do believe they are there's probably technologies that could probably but like you said, you would have to have some type of translator. And I don't know in the future with the digital sounds and how they could translate these things today. Like you say, like Google Translator, like with the languages, like they have actual uh, – I could see it where they would be able to siphon that with, you know, through all these different types of sounds and tonals and come out with a language for the model. Well, I'm actually getting – I'm actually getting the um, the information right now, Brian, as you're talking about this, as you all are discussing this, that we are building Mary, that you are speaking of right now. We are the ones building. And it's very interesting that you also brought up Brian, because this is exactly where they were just going with me right now was it's about when, like for example, when I, I telepathically heard them tell me that many of the Native American languages were from the Pleiades, for example. Now, I have no way to verify that other than the telepathic received. I believe right now, since everything is now, we are we are what you just said i believe i am we are those interpreters, if you will we are the ones building this library right now i want to expand on that just real quick and i'll jump off here uh wendy yes. was was right on right there so let's go back just to say uh the prehistory a little bit or even the ancient languages even native american when they had interaction, which they've showed proof of things coming down from the sky, different ships, and we have some type of uh, some type of proof. It doesn't mean we know all of it, but at, at the, even ancient Samaria, in, in the times of Egypt, Atlantis, you have so these different extraterrestrials coming down and sharing their knowledge, sharing their wisdom, the architect and how the. So my thing is this is. A lot of some of them, not all, but some of them did leave behind these maybe these 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 scripts, these translations, these translators, or these this, these dialects that they've kind of integrated into societies and cultures over time and through history. So that being said, um, I believe there is some type of evidence that maybe we have to find or dig even through, you know, like you said, the ancient Samaritan language have this cotex that you would have something to go by, maybe not for all the languages, but over time, certain sounds and how they're evolved have changed and shifted over time. But they, yet there's still there's yeah. a remaining, right, there's such a remaining that there's still something there that hasn't been found yet. But yet I'm they just, are. Yes, go ahead. I'm just wondering where where do aliens come in this? Like how how do you how do you because when I'm looking at the uh, cuneiform script and cuneiform is basically um, embedded in stone, chiseled out patterns of uh, triangular markings. Um, so it, it's it's a very it, simple it language simple. actually. It might right. It, so when I was saying, go back to that real quick. It might be in a language that was embedded into the stone or into a script. 
um, from tablets, but like you would say, that, that, they, that archaeologists have found. But the thing is, that's not all of them. That's just a small portion. No, it's, it's, it's complete because we have a full language called Hebrew that can make a correlation to the, the, more, the more older languages. So Hebrew is very limited in its But it's limited uh, in because its that's not the only one. Meaning, yeah. but we keep well, thinking, what, okay, well, no, the languages. Else? So you're saying it derived from all Hebrew derived, like it, it, it sprung all these other languages, is what you're saying. Well, Hebrew is one of the still surviving ancient Semitic languages. Yes, very yeah. much so. But what I'm saying is that that's not the only universal language out there. No, it's not. But it is a... Um, so English um, has a... a a huge database as far as the way it has now evolved into this really complex right. language. The evolving, yes. But yet Hebrew so. has pretty much remained Hebrew and Greek has pretty much remained Greek. Maybe difference in pronunciation from Koine to modern. Um, yes, that's what, what I say. Is so like the, so the further back we yes. go, yes. The, the further back we go, we see a funneling down uh, from, from the really complex, which is English, down to a very simple, uh, literally, uh, if, if it's it's like instead of saying one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, when you when you write the numbers one, right, two, three, right. four, five, six, to them they would literally do, if they meant one, they would do one stroke. If they meant two, they'd do two strokes, and then three yes. meaning three strokes. And Something it's really that, basic like that. It's interesting how you can see that it's an interesting thing now. When the language in, in ancient times, how the language, the spoken language, was far more simple, and what does that what, what does that imply? It implies that there was more telepathic communication going on, because there was less need for the language. Yeah, I mean, there, was, there was more. Uh, it was more oral, like an oral speaking society. That's that is true. Yes, and not language English, English language itself. It's it's like you're saying it's a very complex it's a very complex language it's very complex and it's got a, it's, I think of all languages it's got the most words as well well it's obviously it's the one that's used the most as well but English language itself is not a powerful language as in it doesn't the the way that the way that the 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 vibration of it the tones that are used and the vibration of it it doesn't carry it doesn't carry energy well through it. That's why when people start speaking these languages, and it's not just these galactic languages, when people start, start speaking something like Hebrew or Sanskrit or whatever, or Native American Indian, it doesn't matter. These ancient languages, when people speak them, you can hear it when you hear people speak them. You can hear there's a difference in the power and the, and the energy that's carried through them as opposed to something like English or one of these modern languages. And it's, we are, it's something that we will go back to later. We will start drifting back to using languages that are much more powerful. They carry the energy through them much more. Is there an alphabet to the galactic language? I think for some, the way from what I understand is yes, that's correct for some languages, but not for all. You can't generalize it like that because there is millions or millions of different languages. Exactly, because oh, then even, you, even you would. You would have Even to bring language, in the galactic. Like it, you would have right. You would have to bring in the galactic. So you're talking about so many different languages in the universe and different oh, okay. styles of oh, Sorry, um, see, because the thing is, even when we are speaking these languages, it's as when when somebody starts speaking a new language, a galactic language. That's not to say that's a language that's. If you're looking at time linearly, that's not to say that you're looking at a language that's still being spoken now. That could be an ancient language as well, or it could be a language of the future. Uh, okay. okay. Um, just just so, to clarify, so just as because when I use the word galactic, I'm thinking the spiritual language. But when you mean galactic, are you are you thinking? Uh, I just mean the very first with, language in human history up to up to today, and obviously, obviously, there's millions of characters in that. Like when I'm saying galactic language, I'm usually speaking about languages that are spoken not on Earth, that are spoken by other civilizations outside of Earth. This is okay. what I usually mean when I'm saying galactic. So, that's okay. the way I usually tell that. Some is people call it galactic language. Some people call it light language. Some people call it soul language. And it depends on the origin 
that we've determined. I mean, some are Earth-based languages, some are from this 3D reality on different planets, some are from different realms. Like there's an angelic language, there's yeah. there are spiritual languages that don't exist in our physical realms. Many but we still speak them. Speaking in tongues, yeah. Many of them to me are show me their image, but it's ethereal. It's only colors, or it's just energy. It's yes. It's not a name. Yes. It's not an identity. It's a. It's a. Or they say we are a collective, or you are. You know. Yes. We are expanding our minds and ways that we can't begin to comprehend right now but we're in our skin so to speak like as as a mother does when she's giving birth it it takes time to for us to even ending builds upon another we know that are you are you That's sure it's not a placebo effect and How, what's and what's what would i be sure? We would need to study it, that it, it, further to determine whether it's a placebo <laughs> effect or not. Like, like some, Meaning, like some we need to study life more to determine it. whether it's a placebo effect or yeah. not. No, See, I'm just wondering, just, like, some, yeah, anyway. That's, um, that's yeah. the interesting question, though. This, uh, this whole conversation has been phenomenal because it's everything I've been thinking about and trying to wrap my own mind around and everything Neil said, everything Will said, it, it thank you all. Thank you for 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 your synchronistic joy and hopping in this conversation today. This is exactly what the multiverse needed, what we needed it, to get this out in our awareness in a way in a brand new way and to finally bridge and i mean isn't the word metaphysical just mean beyond physical we don't know what we don't know of this this is so exciting i'm very excited with this conversation completely i'm so happy that you made it neil i know how hard this time is for you um, so I'm really, oh, okay. really glad, you know, I'm glad that you were able to come in and Neil's also one that writes a lot of galactic languages like I do. Everything you see behind him, he has written and w this is, that's a whole, like we could do a whole nother hangout just on that, you know? And if you look behind him on, you know, what is that Syrian, is that what you... That's uh, Zeta Gray, yeah. The black Zeta, stuff. That's all Zeta Zeta, Gray. Okay. I, can't, I can't see very well on my whole, but this it's all right. these So the point is like okay. Uh, well, I don't know. Probably because that's what his telepathic information brought him and said this is from the Zetas. I'm just wondering though, like um, there's so many physics questions in regards to the structure of this universe. Um, we we've done we we've, we've made a lot of headway in in uh, understanding the singularity beginnings of it, and you know, this, so far I can I can define sixteen things as, about the universe that you know from a physics context, of, which is quite remarkable. But there's still an, a lot of other un, unanswered questions, um, which uh, can only be answered um, by building more and more powerful, um, uh, like the Large Hadron Collider, all these particle accelerators. Um, now, I presume then that these beings that communicate in this galactic language, that they must far exceed what we've been able to be capable of perceiving in our own language of mathematics. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gathering that they may, may be much beyond what we Most are. So, so why don't they funnel down bits and pieces of information that can because the scientific community would eat this up if, if there's that's exactly what these are you just hit the nail on you just hit the nail on the head that's exactly what these are little 
bits and pieces. These are dribbles. I no, no, I meant, dimensional. Well, I meant more in the sense of um, could they give us a quantum gravity model or could they give us a theory of everything? Like, you know, a, a, because okay. we, we're still trying to structure the mathematics that we're yes. still limited to them. Do but they the have a solution says, to that? It's not, it's not fair yeah. for them to do that. For them to come and give us all the answers, that's not, that's not a fair thing to do. It's like... They have to let they have they have to let us grow as a species on our own. It's okay giving us little bits of help, and it's like what Wendy says, this is what they're doing just now. But they can't give us all the answers because what would be what would be the point then? They have to allow you have to allow the species to grow. He he needs a private session with Jim. <laughs> yeah. I, I was gonna recommend that. I would think yeah. you guys direct him to Jim and let like to Kerr come through or something to explain. Yes. This. No, 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 it's not to Kerr that's gonna come oh. through. Or oh. it is not. Oh. <laughs> I think it's gonna be more Chikani. He's got a whole collection. Oh yeah, they they totally want to speak with you. No, no, Ocha Aya Asana Aya Aka and Acha Atakatsa and Atasana. I have never spoken that language before. Naha Atana Akatasa Acha Atasa Hayaka. She called Hor Shinia Atakatsa. General, thank you. And this is cool is that I can actually recognize in that language, I can recognize words or words but i have spoken i can recognize things neil has spoken it's a re remembering i can't even explain it we just know yeah but wouldn't wouldn't it wouldn't it be a symbiotic relationship for these beings to actually help uh us yes and they are and they are. Let me jump in. One, one, um... But our, our progression scientifically hasn't involved any of this language. Um, it's just um, been our own yet. evolutionary... Okay, when one finds a new culture in the Amazon, first of all, someone outside of that culture needs to find them. And then someone of a certain scientific mindset needs to go there and study them in their expertise. And then they can formulate theories, and I only wanna call it theories, theories on either their behavior or their culture or their language or whatever it is. But somebody needs to do it and somebody needs to get funding and somebody needs to have the desire to do that. And, but until you actually find them, you can't, build desire you can't build the funding you can't do the research and now we are just hey look at this new stuff we found and look at all this stuff that we can do with it so far if we start applying the scientific principles to it and start studying it how can we formulate it how can we apply our rules of the scientific community to it so i love that we're like this, galactic this archaeologists yeah, yes, okay, yes, this is the beginning of everything. We, I personally don't have scientific connections in, or mathematical connections in these communities to go out and say, hey guys, this is what's up. So this is what we're doing here right now is bridging these connections. The fact that, General, that you showed up in this hangout, obviously, as we're saying, all of, we're all like spiritually excited that this happened because it's perfect. We need people outside of this community to know that this stuff is happening and then more believe and then it it can be it can be we can begin to better understand here in this dimension but it's very well, why uh, okay um that's actually a um uh, I, I like that clarification um and so then it's in relation to a question i was about to ask um like when you go and see a tribe, tribal community, obviously you are advanced compared to this tribal community. You then, you bring yourself oh, down wait, to that level. Why, why, why would you say that you're advanced compared uh, to them? Just, advanced the same thing advanced in to what level? Perception. You're different and you believe you're okay. advanced. 
No, no, okay, no, no, no. I'm, okay. Um, I'm, I'm relating it in the context of, um, in this case, the, the this galactic species that that communicate down to you. I'm, I'm trying to give a like an analogy to that. So I'm not saying we are better than them. I'm just saying, as far as the accumulation of knowledge is concerned, we do have a vast accumulation compared to a tribesman. Even though but the tribes may have knowledge that we don't they know have about, vast about accumulation of knowledge you don't have. Let me tell you that right now. They have a, a yes. vast accumulation oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of knowledge I, we don't I, have. I just I wanted to clarify that. I, I wanted to clarify that. Um in the you sense know. that it's relative in in that sense, in the sense that they know how to survive off the land, put a put a city person in the bush sure. and they would not be able to survive off the land. Um, knowledge, true, true. So you have you have a, a relative association of knowledge there. Now, when the first world first world countries, when they go into these third world areas, and they they then start sharing the knowledge, and then they start nurturing these people to then come to this added accumulation of knowledge. So like now they know how to build computers, for example, or they know how to build aeroplanes. Yes. Um, notice that these people didn't do it out of their own, own selves. They were helped by, in this case, first world people. So why can't these galactic beings do the same thing? Okay, so when they go, when when people go and do that, say they were to give them go to the go to a rainforest tribe and they were to give them technology, does that improve their life? I'm talking about an accumulation of knowledge, not just technology. I'm talking about. Yes, but what, uh, what differential, ever? like by the way, differential calculus can help you build a more functional uh, system to to bring up uh, more accumulation of water, like a collection of water in, in a in a tank or something. Like okay. simple mathematical okay. concepts that they have no idea about that can actually benefit their life. Okay, what I would say is this, right? When it comes to when it okay. comes Neil, to that, right? Neil, I know try not I, to get philosophical on him, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. Like what I would say is this, right? No matter on what scale, if, if it's somebody um, going to an indigenous tribe on earth, so, some civil, some race on earth going to an indigenous tribe and shooting their their evolution very, very fast forward, like jump-starting them into uh, uh, their, their technology and everything forward, like far, far for, further than they've been in the last thousand, few thousand years. And that's happened a lot. You see it with the Aborigines and the Maoris and there's other cultures as well that has happened with. When it jumps too fast, it goes very, very badly wrong. Now, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be, that there shouldn't be advancements advancements and help because that is what evolution is. It's part of evolution to do that. But it has to be done in the right way because if it's done, if it's leapfrogged too much, it can cause big problems. Now that's one. What's one thing? Another thing as well is you have you have to, from my opinion, from my perspective, okay, you have to allow growth within groups. However, you look at if you look at civilizations as complete worldly civilizations, or if you look at as small um, smaller groups upon a planet. It doesn't matter. You have to allow them their own personal growth, and in some ways, you you have a responsibility to how much you actually give. Humanity itself, humanity was created by we are a we have we are a hybrid species, and it wasn't set up for us to be shown the way the whole way it wasn't set up that way it was set up for us to find our own way because when you start when you find your own way there is a lot of lessons within that and there's a lot of personal growth within that and as a civilization you need to go through these steps you need to go through these learn these learning processes so that it makes you it makes the civilization who they are and it makes an individual who they are when they do that in their life as well so there has to be a there has to be a certain amount of stepping back and watching. It's like a it's like a mother with a with a child or a parents with a child watching the child. They have to allow the child to grow on their own. They can't give the child everything because the child it doesn't work. It doesn't work when you do that. The aliens so far have been helping us. There's a lot of technology they've given us. 
the only thing is, is most of the technology you don't see. Most of it's put into the secret projects. The aliens are working with humans in the secret projects. And there, there is a lot of help coming from the aliens, even if it's negative beings that are doing this, they're still handing technology over. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things exactly being back engineered it, as well. Where, where are these secret projects? These secret projects are taking place all over in, in all continents. There's deep underground base, uh, deep underground military bases. Where there's we, we digress, that. though. It's interesting, but we're digressing. Just, yes, just yeah. so, well, we're slightly off the topic, and we're going to end up if, talking about. If there was, <laughs> say, if there was, um, like, like an end of the world scenario sort of thing, like, say, a, a complete natural disaster that. I'm just hypothetical. This is a thought experiment. Say the people in this hangout, we are the only ones that survive. Um, there are a few in this hangout that have supposedly connections to these these beings, right? Um, now, who who Colo? Is that how you pronounce your name? Who Colo? Hugh Colo. It's a short for human colony. Hugh Colo. Okay. <laughs> um, so so Hugh Colo. Um, graciously acknowledge that we there is a separation between you know the science community and, and this community but that you know your, your gathering now let's just say there's absolutely no scientists that have survived um how do you rebuild society is there a way in which you can have an automatic like programming from these beings to, to you know to for you to then go okay i know exactly what to do in order to bring back society the way it was um, notice you're not there's no added knowledge it's just the knowledge that was already there it's just you weren't trained okay. in it but it's a supernatural pro, you know like a download in you, fact you're, was, you're opening a can that of was a question or... that was asked before as well yeah. like like downloaded <laughs> that is a, this is yes a very because big big question yeah see the science community the, like the science the... community sorry on you go wendy i'll let you on you go no, no go ahead go ahead neil Okay, all I was going to say is the science community, as the difference is with what Huclo do and what the science community do, there's a lot of things that do lap overlap, but the science community is very much based upon intellect. It's purely intellect. It doesn't, the heart doesn't come into it in any way at all. And if there's no facts, it has to be intellectually right. It has to, they have to have the, the facts, the physical facts for them to know that something's, re that something's right. They won't use their intuition to know if something's right, and they wouldn't use something that they would think is not um, as is, is not physical as proof. Um, and no, that no, is no. The I, I think I think you misunderstood my question. I, I, was, I was saying something oh, okay, like, sorry. like, so you have a complete natural disaster where all technology is destroyed, and the the people in this hangout are the only ones left. Um, yes, I think we understand what you're saying that. Could we innately tap into the information? Okay, in order to rebuild the society, those of us, what's left of us here, have to rebuild this. Can we tap into higher information and instinctively understand how to do things? Yes. Yeah, say, so, say, yeah. say, say, something, as, say something as simple as a combustion engine of a car, like like to build a car so yes, that each one yes, of us can, can move around. Yes, because and it happens that way. Let's, let's, Scientists actually do that way really often. There's, there's often there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, sorry, on you, Wendy. <laughs> sorry. So that's how Einstein got his information was, is that he actually was able to bridge the two to say, okay, I have, there's a need, or I have a, I have a new solution. I'm going to go to a meditative state, or I'm going to sleep with the intention of receiving the answer. Einstein did that? And he would do this because he understood about frequency. And he understood the frequency of vibration and the answer are different. It's, it, it's, it's so a lot of the great... Sorry. Where did he do this, though? Because because yes. I'm I'm a physicist and, That's all, and you're right. so we need to supply That's references right. or D General Han Solo needs to do some <laughs> Google homework. Right. There's so I mean, 
So many. This is not a white the, paper with references. So many of the geniuses, so many of the masters. Tesla, for instance. Tesla. Right. Exactly. Was bringing you this. Come back to us more often. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But so this information is in these different realms, these different dimensions. There's, I mean, there's different dimensions from, and that goes in the whole dream world thing. And there's the mental plane and the physical plane and the astral plane. And the, there's all this different stuff. And so in the mental plane, a lot of these, like, um, that goes to the hundredth mon monkey effect, that experiment that Neil had brought up where the different, um, monkeys were started to do the same thing because they started using tools on one island and then the collective consciousness adapted that understanding and then on the other island the monkeys were doing that same thing eventually um so this is how we work as uh as a collective and so we are actually always being guided all of us all throughout the day we're being guided by our higher self by our guides by our you know, whoever it may be um to make the right decisions for us and then we can choose to follow that guidance or not um and it, it there i mean this goes into a whole big topic, but to answer your question from how I understand it, yeah, yes, we have access. We can tap into um, anything at any point. We have teachers with us of spiritual uh, spirit guides uh, of a higher dimension in a higher frequency that are teachers that have lived lifetimes as mathematicians or scientists or whatever, and we can call upon those teachers to help us facilitate and understand information for whatever we're doing in in any aspect and this is something I'm working on too because um, I would like guidance with things that I struggle with um, and so it's learning to trust and learning to tap into that and yes Michelle thank you for bringing up the Akashic Records that's a whole different topic where everything that happens is recorded <laughs> everything that happens in the universe is recorded into well, this is a good experiment. This is I, I just I just had an idea for an experiment for you. You being a scientist, it would be wonderful if you could have a pick subject matter that you would like <clears throat> to pinpoint clarification on. <laughs> Days, in whatever way you fit, whether it's in your you know, showering, um, just the, if you if you practice any kind of meditation, that um, any put a question out there in you to accept just a shred of belief that the information, the answer will come to you. Simply by intending it, and you will answer. No, you know when you get it, trust me, you'll know. Just like any other epiphany or, or understanding you've ever had in your, in your own scientific journey, you chose science for a reason. Think of the things that you've already received, um, just out of the blue, as an idea. Oh, that's the answer to that equation whatever I would love to know the next time the next now we are together if, if you've indeed had the ability to manifest an answer this way and whether it works or doesn't I'm just curious I don't really believe and if you can believe it or ask yourself to believe it I would want I would really love to know if you were able to actually solve a problem a scientific problem or get an answer to this from a scientific standpoint in order to help us all substantiate all of this that would be fabulous yeah that in fact that's that's the reason why i was asking the questions um because i'm in in science you're taught the scientific method in the sense of you make an and there's, there's obviously an initial condition taking place 
then you make a hypothesis based on that initial condition, then you ask questions, then you you test the hypotheses and the questions for any empirical data that can, and, and it's not just testing it, you're, you're wanting to repeat it, you're wanting to see if it's repeatable in a totally isolated context as well, which means the phenomena is you know the same everywhere, and then you can make conclusions on that, and so, it, and hence it you know just just to go back to how this how this discussion started, um, the whole uh, language uh, of this galactic you know thing um, that. Are the phonetic sounds, are they always different? Uh, because they sound random. Uh, but, so, you know, and I gave analogies like the word and, you, you know, the pronunciation of the word and. It's it's only pronounced, the only that way in English. Um, you have, yeah, again, yeah. very narrow pronunciations in Greek and, and German and so on. Is it the same with this galactic language? You notice, notice the questions I'm asking is structured like the scientific method. So the answer to that question is we don't know yet. For sure, but it feels it feels that way. It feels like ah, we can yeah. have a conversation. Right. Many, but, but let me jump in. Let me it. jump in. I think what we should do is you should email me Together. and we can <laughs> we can make a hangout where we can do your little experiment. Yes. But, but, but that, can, that that is that is technically science. Then you're you're doing science. Yes. So because I, would, I am uh, I come from a science background, and I am all about the scientific method, and we can engage the holy fire. And exactly, you like that, Bree, don't you? I do. And so you can. So if you were to write up what the experiment is. The, the hypothesis that's going to be tested and we'll make it really simple and then whoever shows up will participate in the experiment and we can go through the scientific process on whatever it is and we can schedule like an hour hangout and since you're in Australia we'll, we'll do it so that it's uh, beneficial for Australian time so and you're not up in the middle of the night yes, like so Neil Neil's over in uh, New yeah, Zealand for Neil. right so let me also add in here then, um, quantum physics in relation to these scientific experiments. I know we are way, way, way over time. I do not care. I don't care. This is amazing. This is uh, I know. Important. I'm so but excited. I can't stand this. <laughs> we should probably wrap it up. But, I okay, quantum physics, right? Please look up. If you have not seen this yet, General, and anybody watching, please look up Dr. Emoto water frequency experiments. His name is spelled E-M-O-T-O. -O. He, he was a Japanese scientist, a physicist, who um, demonstrated to the world that quantum physics controls everything in our reality. Well, technically, we control everything in our quantum physics reality. And we have quantum supercomputer brains did want to also mention earlier in the hangout that they're also time machine brains because they're quantum, but that's a whole different topic. Um, so going to the understanding that our, we, we have a light body. We perceive to have this physical flesh and this physical body, but it's all frequency. It's all light. It's all energy. And our consciousness is frequency and our emotional body is frequency and our astral body our etheric body is frequency so there's all these different frequencies and they make one set light sound whatever you want to call it so when it comes to quantum physics with experiments what they're finding is actually experiments the results of the experiment completely depend on the person doing the experiment and their belief system about that experiment. So with the water frequency experiments that he did, um, I'll just sum it up really quick, as quick as I can. He took water molecules and he um, subjected them to different variables of frequency, whether it be talking to the mo molecules and saying, I love you, 
or saying, I hate you, I'm going to kill you, or thinking something bad, bad with, you know, lower vibrational words of, you know, anger or whatever, thinking prayers to them. Also writing thing, writing down words and putting them near and all of these things, the written words, the spoken words, the thought, the thoughts, they all carry frequency that are so that are put onto those molecules. He then froze the molecules and was able to demonstrate and able to show that the molecules were different. The beautiful, they were beautiful and they froze beautifully in these gorgeous, amazing shapes when it was the high frequency, the love, the compassion, the blessings, when it was the lower stuff, when it was the dark, heavy metal music and, and all that, when it was anger, the free, the water molecules were all jumbled and nasty looking and it was just not a mess. And it shows that this is how everything works because water is a part of pretty much everything and we are mostly water. And so even things like sarcasm have a huge impact on the entire world around us. If we're thinking something negative while somebody's talking, that has an influence on everything around us, including them, including us, including our body and, and everything. So there's also experiments that are now being done where physicists are um, measuring um, photons. And I can't remember the exact details, so please excuse me with this, and, and you can look it up. But um, they're measuring how photons go through like slits or something. And basically what they're finding is it behaves differently depending on what they believe is going to happen in the experiment. So I wanted to add that in there because really what this all boils down to is our belief system literally creates the entire reality, the entire holographic co-created universe around us because this is this, all this stuff is only here because we are here to create it and observe it for, for what it is. And so we can talk about this for days and hours and weeks, but I, I felt it was very important to really add in those experiments and the quantum physics and that will be a factor. It's really the belief system. If, if There are people have, who have tried to do these experiments themselves and they said, that's a crock of shit. There's no way that that can ever be the case. Well, what did they find in their experiment then? It didn't work out. It didn't work out. They didn't get the results. They got the results they were looking for. It was proven to them that their belief system was governing. They found what they wanted to find. They said, this is a crack of shit. There's no way if I write these different words on this and I throw it in the fridge or whatever, you know, so there's love written on this jar and hate written on this jar. There's no way it's going to be the same. The, the words have nothing to do with how the rice ends up being however many days later. But for people who went into that experiment believing, there was obvious evidence that the one with love written on it, let's say, was beautiful and flourishing many days later. And then that, that gets into the whole sacred geometry stuff and how you can use pyramid energy to... Um, revitalize and to heal the frequencies and reset the frequencies and so my god i could talk about it forever but there's so much there's so much and I, this is I all really, yeah so I, exciting. I really appreciate the uh the enthusiasm in sharing that but um i it, i really it, it it pains me to say that um i do disagree because i i do know of uh, emoto's arguments um it's just because it, I can see I can see the in the enthusiasm in your face. It's just, um, I, I, and I'm I'm being honest on my on my end as well. That That's um, fine. the claims he made were completely debunked. Like it, um, it, it, it because his the when you're dealing with variables and in the water crystal structure, um, he didn't take into account the fact that. Um, the containers that he put the water in could have actually disrupted the crystal crystalline structure of the frozen water. Um, you're talking about vibrations that can actually destabilize the crystal structure. So if, if he's having nice, calm music, then yes, crystalline structures take a certain form. But if you have jarring music, then crystalline structures break apart 
Um, it, it's just things like that that because I'm because when you when you were mentioning that immediately, I was thinking of the chemical bonds of water and you know the angles that the chemical bonds make and amongst themselves and and yeah, like the the strong and weak nuclear forces that are associated with basically hydrogen and oxygen, uh, how the you know the electrons orbit and things like that, and none of that is affected um, by whether you speak hate or love to it. It's just a thing. It's just this this physical object that exists in reality. Um, but yeah, no, I I hate I hate. Uh, disagreeing. <laughs> no, because you please, you, please don't. Like, it's, well, it is important for that perspective to. Because I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to make you feel uh, no, like you wasted time. No, no, no. Don't no. worry. Yes. This is important because this is this is what we're doing right now. Is we're bridging because the information in regards to belief systems governing our reality is more of a spiritual, philosophical, whatever you want to call it, understanding that's coming from a different place than the brain, the logic, the analytics that we mm -hmm. have to apply to this third dimensional reality we're living in. But it seems through the information that we have started to gather and understand from, um, let's say, higher dimensional entities. I'll throw out Bashar there again, Bashar the sh of the Shikani race, which is future us, basically. That's a whole different story. Um, through these these information, these channelings, which has started, it started back in like the 70s when this really started to pick up and there were more and more people that were like, wow, I'm getting all this information. I, and they're, you know, where is this stuff coming from? And then there was more and more discoveries made. And so now it, we, so Human Colony is a community of people who are gathering together all across the world who are awakening to the understandings that they are channelers too. They can channel what they wish to channel um, and, and then discussing that information that comes through, whether it be from the angelics, the spirit guides, the, you know, the spirits, people who have passed away, galactic, interdimensional, extra dimensional, multidimensional beings, aliens, all of it. So um, from what we're learning, it seems as though, there's a lot more to our reality that we have not been able to measure because we haven't even known to look for all of this stuff. So this is, things are going to continue to be uncovered. They're going to continue, the, the puzzle pieces are going to continue to come together for us. And so there's, like we were mentioning, little bits and pieces that are coming from the galactic omniverse um, of all else that is. Um, and so how I'm understanding what you're saying about the debunking of that experiment, um, is that they went into, and I, and I have, I only looked into a little bit of it. So I can't say that I, you know, am well versed on any of this at all. But from what I understand, those physicists or scientists, they went into the experiments believing that they were going to debunk it. And the physical result was that it was debunked. And yes, there were more factors that Dr. Emoto should have done in his experiment. Absolutely. Um, more things to take into account. But it still gets back to the understanding that we are the conscious co-creators of everything around us and our frequency that we choose because this is all free will our whole the fact that i'm able to control this vessel that i'm in right now this is free will me waving my arms around i'm deciding to wave my arms around so we are emitting frequencies from our consciousness from our subconsciousness from our heart from our soul from the actions we do from the things we say from the people we interact with and it's all frequency and it affects 
absolutely everything because everything is connected. Technically, from a higher understanding, from what I'm gathering, everything is all from the same source, but it has been, but there are different frequencies of it, and that's why we see things as being diverse. Oh, God, I'm... Well, that, yeah, it, it does... I'm not very, used to very, very <laughs> There's big. so much. But, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is, is, is uh, um, how language it affects us as a, as a means of communication. We can experiment all day long, but we know how we talk to each other makes us feel different depending on how we're approached, whether we feel attacked or loved. Our, our physical body, I think, changes. We know it does. Our heart rate changes. Our frequency changes. We know that. Mm -hmm. The physical effect with language. And I think that it end of the day, that's really what we're talking about here is just simply the effect that language has on our reality and as, and as a form of communication, regardless of where it comes from, really. And somebody can say something to you, but yet you can know something completely different by their energy. I think we can all agree to that. So, when somebody says to you, you're not ugly, or if somebody says to you, you are quite beautiful, we feel differently. It really does, even though you're saying sort of the same thing, but you're not. You're, you, it's a different vibration. It just makes you feel different. We sing. We sing and talk to our children and our pets differently than we do to each other. It's all about frequency. So we're just beginning, yes, to explore all of this and the, and the, the alchemy of it, what it all means to us, what's real and what isn't. Um, and I hope that, and I know, that you as a scientist, all of us, this is what we're doing. We're playing, figuring out what, how is our reality actually created? How, that's the big question. Isn't that what we're, isn't it the really, what we're here to, to, to really talk about today is how is our reality created? What does it mean? How, why do they affect me? How does language in general affect me? How does sound? When you hear a song, you feel different when you hear one song versus another. You can reach for a specific song to go feel a specific thing. It's well, you you, you might be wondering what the photo is. Um, this person on a cross, the three to well, actually, this cross looks. Uh, I don't know. If, have you guys seen this painting before? This this painting that I have is my profile photo. I don't think I don't think that I have. It's yes. a painting by a man named Salvador Dali. Um, oh yes, I know Salvador Dali. Yes. So he drew this. It's a, I, I I love this painting because um, it's depicting Jesus on a tesseract, an unfolded four dimensional tesseract. So. Basically, um, when you unfold a three-dimensional cube, you unfold it into a two-dimensional um, cross-like shape. But but mathematicians yes. want to know what does a four-dimensional cube look like in three-dimensional space? And obviously, mm -hmm. you can't visualize it. So the only way you can visualize it is if you unfold it the, the same way you unfold a three-dimensional cube. Now, when you unfold a four-dimensional cube, it takes on this three-dimensional structure. And yes. Salvador Dali um, is basically saying the the whole Christian notion of Jesus on the cross, it's actually 
there's a lot more going on. It's a multi-dimensional. Uh, I would agree. Actually, the tesseract is one of the things that came to me telepathically. That op it was like a key. One day, I was introduced to some geometry, and the tesseract was one of them. And actually, it be I don't know why it, but it triggered something in me. Right. So yeah, it's it, just just out of interest sake. Uh, that's the reason why I have it. Photo up is but, um, it's it's a lot. There's a lot more going on, theologically speaking, than yes. what most Christians think. Yeah. And again, time. there's no mistaking the vi the vibration of the fact that you chose that particular image, and and having this discussion today, and you ending up here. The, the, that is that can, that actually brings everything to such a complete beautiful closure because that's what we're doing is what that picture represents is there's way more that's going on here that you guys even understand when it comes to spirituality and your physics. I, I am, yeah, I, you know, the reason why I haven't been, the, the, the reason why I haven't been, uh, but I, I don't even know if, if people outside, like if, if, have you had many of these type of interactions? In no. terms of speaking to, to people like you from this community? Yeah. Not yeah. yet, but that is where we're going. And you are a wonderful way it's to all start. About change. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I came from your background. <laughs> well, Okay. Well, that, that's the well, thing. Right. That okay, I'm sorry, Will. I didn't, I didn't mean to, what, I think you know what we meant in terms of like somebody who came in randomly and is like, wait, who are, what are you doing? What's going on? That's what I meant. At least once a month. Right, right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm also, I was asking in the sense of, um, there can be very rude people on the internet. Like, um, I could have just been one of those you know, random atheists or something, and I would have just blown this away, like in the sense of, oh, this is just all nonsense, and I'm out of here, sort of thing. Oh, we've um, had we've had our visitors, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that. Oh, yeah. And they okay. come and gone, and yeah. no, you, you are right on time. It, it was time for this conversation to happen, and and so I'm, I'm happy you're here. I'm the reason why I've. Um, it's been easy to have like a gracious dialogue is because I am myself a, a Christian and that's why I can understand these spiritual concepts that, that you're trying to communicate. But then at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, blending that with the, with a scientific flavor because of my training and, and because of my Christian theology. So, yeah. Oh, don't backpedal okay. now. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely. We're, we're totally love enjoying it. the conversation. We can get spiritual too. <laughs> and you know, a lot yeah, of no, us. I'm not back deadly. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just well, trying to build a bridge to showcase why, yeah. So it's interesting too that it brings the idea to me just now that you, okay, Will had has a background in that, and he's a, a computer person as well. And I re, and it just reminded me that that's where my beginning came from was the introduction into the world of computers. I was there, you know, when it started and was learned a little bit about programming and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But the idea was, is it was all part of this process. And it's interesting because I was also very physical. Um, and not very spiritual in, in, in some ways. I didn't have like a, anyway, church thing, but there was, because they couldn't answer my questions. So, all the bridges. I mean, Will is a Reiki master. I'm starting to study Reiki, but yet what opened the doors for me was symbology and geometry. Um, but it's interesting how we're doing that we're, we're finally as a collective consciousness putting out there that we need to bridge this and realize it's all the same thing just like you're painting it just from a different perspective and that we don't even know what we don't know 
Oh, yeah. And I, I that you pointed that painting out, and um, I haven't been in it, but we, my son was down to visit the Salvador Dali Museum um, here in the United States, and. I'm just finding this all beautifully synchronistic. I, I just in the Tampa Bay day, area. This, I've been this whole to day it. has been amazing. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's where we were. Yep. And so this couldn't have been more perfect timing, more synchronistic timing. And and yeah, we normally try to keep this to um, you know a, a reasonable two hours. And but this this who. And, and and interacts with this and sees this later. This is what's going on now. We're going to finally. It's it's all related. It's all connected. Can I jump in? Please, Justin. Oh, yes, I'm on this. Yay! <laughs> hey. Oh, hey, Johannes. I oh, I thought, to... well, sorry. I know Justin wanted to say something too. No, please go ahead. I just wanted to jump in with an experience that I had uh, with, I, I was just listening and, and it was when I was 18 years old <laughs> uh, in where I live, that means a lot. It should mean a lot, you know, that you're, that you're off the hook so to speak and you are on your own so but uh, i celebrated that with my father in spain and i had a feeling like because he gave me money he was there giving me money i was living with them so so but he gave me he gave me like five euros a day but i was like i was not spending those money i was like i should put those away i don't know you know i should just because I don't need to use them, I'm fine, you know, I'm I'm with him and he's paying everything anyway, you know, so, uh, you know, with the food and all that. But he gave me five euros a day and we were there for one week and I was passing this, this tattoo shop every day. It was on the way down to the beach and I, and I like walking, you know, I like walking, taking walks and looking around and, and you know, so... And I was still walking past this uh, this um, tattoo shop, and so <laughs> that was the feeling that I had that that was what I was going to uh, put the money on. You know, I, I still was going these days, uh, those days, and I was still thinking about it. You know, if I should do it or if it's worth it. You know, and all these thoughts that you're going through and when you're <laughs> doing something like that so anyway i did it and i felt so good i felt so fucking good doing that tattoo and it you know literally made my life change you know and now uh, i didn't count it but i'm 28 now and i was 18 then so it's 10 years ago actually and one i'm 28 as well <laughs> and one week ago i found out what that tattoo meant and it, on a deeper level to me and to everything that i am and to everything that exists in in everything that you are that we are um and it was symbolizing something that I didn't know at that time when I was 18, but I did. I felt it all the time, but I didn't, I didn't have that, you know, realization of what it really meant to me to do that. I just did it because I felt like this, this feels right at this time I should do it. And now 10 years later, under a trans session, with myself and and spirit and i was told what you know in a in a telepathic 
uh, heart message. You know, it's it's from the feeling. And tele telepathy is is from the heart. It's, it's from what you feel, and and then images can occur from that feeling. But that's the telepathy. It's the feeling that what brings. And anyway, that was the experience. So everything that that we do today. My point is everything that we do today, we feel is right and things we say and things we do and and uh, and move on with will maybe not be clear to us right now <laughs> why we are doing it and what it symbolized on a deeper level, on your soul level, on on the gift of being message about yourself in the in a sense of the of the spirit, as when spirit comes in. And, and tells you about stuff that you already know, but you need to hear it at this time because it is important to you and you want to hear it from from them. So they are here to tell you the things you want to hear from yourself. So it's all, you're giving it to yourself. We're all connected. We are all one and we're all speaking about ourselves. We're all speaking about the one that we are here right now. And it is beautiful to be a part of it. Totally fucking beautiful. It is, it is so nice beautiful. To just follow up this story that we've been dreaming about. To follow up when we're just doing it and we're just awesome at it. And we're just fucking rocking because we're ending up with each other. Speaking about this awesome stuff. Awesome thoughts. Awesome messages and and art and music and we feel it it's what it was it is what we feel is right and that's the feeling that's the telepathy that is you that's the lot of feeling so continue to speak about your feelings and things will unfold when it's supposed to unfold to you in the perfect time for you to receive it in the perfect way for you that you have created for yourself in the perfect way. <laughs> so it's all perfect. It's all, you know, it's all good. It is all good. Oh, thank you, Johannes. That was such a cool uh, <laughs> little little way to put all all of what you said uh, spot on and totally with what we're we're talking about here. And I wanted to please give Justin the opportunity. Justin, you've been so patient. Did you want to add something? You were trying to jump in for a while now and uh, and say some things. I know we kind of jumped around on the topics, but um, if you're still around, Justin, feel free to speak up. Um, if not, I think we should probably bring this to a close for sake of any brevity we have left. Um, is Are there any last closing comments before we do some quick blessings? Well, I think I'll leave it at that. I appreciate the fact that it's gone over time, and um, I'll, I hope you guys take care. If you want to have that experiment online, you can email me at reikiwithwill.com. Will at reikiwithwill.com. Will at ReikiWithWill.com. Awesome. And as far as Wendy's email address, she can be reached at languagesoflights at gmail.com. That's all plural, languagesoflights. Also, um, you can donate to Wendy uh, with her PayPal address using that email. Um, so if you wanted to donate anything, um, Wendy and I are working on some awesome galactic light language endeavors so cool things are in the works um and so with that said um i think we can probably move oh justin wait uh justin you there? wanted to say something i didn't hear you earlier but i know your microphone works you've been popping up on the screen when you wanted to talk a few times so mm, still not hearing anything though that's too bad well, volume, maybe try your volume. Uh, I'll check the settings, but um, well, yeah, on his end, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Everything looks good here. I'm not sure. Um, 
Okay. Well, then we can probably. Can he type a question or no? Okay. Um. Yeah. It's pro. It's probably just time to time to end. Just. Oh wait, Justin, you're. You just popped on the screen. There? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It's not working. Okay. Well, then I will do a quick blessing. Um. And then if other people would like to add in any blessings, so that we can end this for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, all right. No shataya ana hau koroto to ania toa ana shaketayo ta ayata auro to 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 kaisen yana no toro aha yata au koro to osho no ona naniana kosho ata yata au kosho aha ya ana na na otoa ya na 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 oka shati auto toro to to ania na na kashi yata auro to aha na na yeka. I soto toro o naiaka o shuturo to unya na ano no naia aia ha shuto ata a o soto toro to o naia ha ka a o shuto oro to ana ha ya ha namaste namaste thank you Will yeah I'll go oh Brian please go right ahead yeah I'd love to can you guys hear me okay Yep. Ai. Iki otoko no wa. Shili okania. Isele ai. Olo no koko iki. Akele asana ni a koko ata tiki. Alana ni a ko shoko to wa. Ini uko shu willi o no ko to wa katia. Ili oso to wa. Ni alea ta kadia. Yushukolo no wa. Shaliyo tua. Namaste. Thank you, Brian. Namaste. Will. Thank you, Brian. I'm I'm smiling. Shio <laughs> kunta. Thank you, Will. He oro no chor sataya haka na atasana cha ayako no hoyo achana sa chihar sana katata. Ia na acha ana asana hia katasana hayata. You are of infinite dimensionality. You can tap into anything. Focus your awareness. Why no hosha to no yaka na na tisinich ata. Disengage your ego. Why ko no sho to o no hosayata. He no hoso ho. See the truth with your heart. Na cha na ana. He no hoso no ho ya kata na hayata na hayata. You are divine beings made of love and light. Na cha ya kana hasa ta o ho no ho cha rana. Yishi ni ya kana asa na hayata na hasa na. O cha o no ho ya kana hasa na shaniya ta kana ya ta ta. He shall own no hoya con no hos and not yet to tikini ata. Nisi horacha no horacha son no ho. Yeah, they stopped at the translation. It was speaking to your soul then. Why on no no shall not to con no ho no chi oto ho? Ye are a nahi at the nata. Ay, I at a nahi can a hei cha no ho. He or no ho kachisha nata. He can a. Namaste, my friends. Stay blessed.
Namaste. Thank you, Michelle. It's so exciting to hear you speaking languages now. <laughs> it's so cool. It's, it's fun because you, you know, prior were like, I can't do that. Yeah, that's what you guys do. And I just wanted to add that in there that once you drop that belief system, it started to flow, right? It's very, very exciting. I love you, Michelle. Okay. Um, I think we're... Um, almost done. Wendy, can you please wrap it up with a beautiful blessing for the human collective? Oh, thank you all. And how exciting to hear all of you speaking beautiful languages. And remember, we really do activate each other, each other up. And these languages are part of that, that awakening ascension process. So I invite all of you to listen to my languages of lights youtube channel i've got many many frequencies and channelings and i would love to know how they physically affect people many people do you know let me know but i'd really like to know on a on a, a, a spiritual level a physical level of effects these languages have on people as a way of beginning to really bridge all of this and our and, and expand of these new but old languages this is really not anything new we've been doing this for a very long time and maybe we're just now beginning to understand what it's all about from a multi-dimensional point of view, as well as that spiritual point of view, the wool point of view, and the marrying of these, these energies and understandings and belief systems. And identifying really how we create our own reality. Seth said, you create your own reality. And truly, isn't that what we've all been trying to figure out since really the day we remember last is all our lives we've been trying to figure out what's my point here? What's my purpose? What's my service? Okay. What's my gift? What do I yearn for? What do I ask for? What do I want to share? What excites me? All of that is how we create our universe, our reality. And we're all here together to learn and understand how to learn, how to be students. We're always at every moment both of those simultaneously, always an equal exchange of energy. So I invite you to explore your higher heart, ask for clarity, wisdom, the ability to step outside and see that box unfold how does all of this affect you you are the reason you're here you are the reason you were created it's as simple as that you exist because you need to exist because you're necessary for this now, in this time. So if languages is something that excites you, come and join us. Find me, 
find light language other speakers out there see what resonates with you and you'll begin to feel and see the similarities what you feel connected to and see where this information takes you in your quiet time your meditation are the guides giving you the answers you've been looking for by way of synchronicity so every day ask yourselves what do i need to see feel and touch and interact with for the highest good of my expansion my awareness of myself how i create my reality and how what we do and how we interact affects that matuya nasalayama toyo posayashaniawa desoto shiawa you are simply asked the joy you feel explore it expand on it and share it without expectation with wild abandon for that is why you came to express and understand and share and love Sometimes there is no translation. Just as the gaze of another's eyes into yours needs no language no translation a smile is the same multiversely look into the eyes of another and send them a telepathic message and see if they don't respond this is the, just the beginning of the understanding of your power and your connection to each other and every other realm. Always remember you cannot imagine that which you are not the vibration of. This is physically not possible. I leave you now in your own perfection. Every possible moment. We are perfect with you. Mahala. The light within you illuminates the light within me. And the light within me illuminates the light within you and together we illuminate greater the light of the all namaste 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 thank you wendy thank you everyone for joining thank you all beings who joined in today who provided their energies thank you all for watching thank you to the emissaries of the light collective that i'm sure wendy was just bringing um information from um and with that i think we can end today are there any last final comments before we finish up here okay beautiful 
Thank you guys for sticking around. If you've watched this whole thing, you are awesome. If you didn't watch this whole thing and you skipped to the end, you're still awesome. You guys are all awesome. And as Will would say, <laughs> as Will would say, the multiverse just got more awesome. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Woohoo! All right. Well, I'm gonna end it. Thank you guys. We love you. Stay in touch. Love you. Check out more events coming from Human Colony at humancolony.org and keep being awesome. Bye bye.